Hey, 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 are you ready for sneak peek week? We are going to be painting our door hanger today. So if you are catching the live, I want you to tell me that you're here. Say good morning, say hey. Um, tell me where you're watching from. Hello. Tell me, oh, we've got Raylan here. <laughs> All right, so we've got our door hanger that we're gonna be painting today. If you are catching the replay, I want you to put hashtag replay. But if you are watching live, I want you to say good morning, good morning, okay? And our secret word for the day is studio. So without further ado, this one's not going to take a long time, but it's got a lot of, I got some juicy tips and tricks on how to make your door hangers a little faster. I'm even going to give you a fun stencil tutorial. Um, we are going to be working, we are painting this one. We are paint, let's get her popsicle ready. What? Ah, there we go. Oh, that was cool. That was cool, wasn't it? Uh, we are going to be painting our door hanger for sneak peek week. Like I have been telling you for the last few weeks, we are going to spend all week, five straight days, creating some fun um, home decor that coordinates perfectly. So by the time we finish, you should have a complete home decor set that coordinates and is ready to go up when you're ready to put your fall stuff out. And we opted for apples this year because that's what you voted for. We were kind of over pumpkins. We all know how to do a pumpkin. We all have plenty of pumpkins. We decided let's go for some fall apples. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. I'm gonna go full table, okay? And like I said, our secret word, and y'all know what the secret word is for, and if you don't, we'll explain it a little later into the live, but our secret word today is studio. I'm gonna put this over here so you don't forget. And let's, you're gonna see my ceiling for just a second. Uh, mommy, yes, my baby. You did I paint it yesterday? Yeah, look. I did, didn't I? But that's okay. We're gonna paint it again. Why? Because last time I didn't show everybody how to do it, I just painted it for fun. So to start off, we're going to need a sponge. Okay, it doesn't matter what kind of sponge. It could be a car sponge. I just use a good old kitchen sponge. This is from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a two-pack. I cut it in half. And like I said, this is the other half. So I just cut it in half. These do clean up and they are reusable. Good morning, good morning, Teresa. How are you doing? Y'all don't forget your secret word for today is studio, okay? Let me get my live set up and then we'll get the painting. All right, you and your crunchy popsicle, why don't y'all go play, okay? Uh-oh. You don't want to? Mm-mm. Uh -uh. mm, mm You really don't? You want to hang out with us? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, we're good to go. I've got my, my comments up. Let's get some light going. There we go. All right. It's blue. It is a little blue, isn't it? Yeah. All right, yeah. we've got our friends hanging out with us. We're gonna first base coat this entire door hanger white, okay? And I'll tell you why. It's not because it Mommy, needs it. Like it. Is it, it does look like Venturina, doesn't it? It's not because I think it technically needs it, but I do believe that it will make all of our colors pop. So let's go ahead and set ourselves up for success and base coat it white. So I'm gonna move all my little paints over here. Um, I saw I saw an apple. We're gonna paint you to death. We uh, paint you to death. We're gonna paint you to death. We're gonna paint you up, girl. I mean, you know, all right. So I'm just dipping. Apple. This is slightly damp, and that's just so that the paint does not um, fully saturate Whoa, mommy, the sponge. Okay. Mommy, we will go. need two coats of this white just to get full opacity, but let's go ahead and get our first coat. Mommy, get more, more, more. We will. I promise. It looks like a moon. It, it looks like a moon? Yeah, like a, like a, like a moon apple. Oh, that's our sponge for, for later. Yeah, it's wet. It's a little damp. Yeah, because mm -hmm, I washed it. Now, if you have trouble keeping your sponges clean, I highly recommend... Um, letting them soak in a little bit of rubbing alcohol and then cleaning them. Don't get real abrasive with them. They will fall apart. Let's remember sponges are a little fragile. They will fall apart. So um, let them soak in a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I like to, to, to wring them out and put them in a Ziploc bag just so that they can kind of marinate a little bit. 
and then I go back in and I, I let them, I rinse them out with warm water. And then I just rinse and repeat until they're completely clean. Okay, a little bit more and then we'll do a second coat. This went on somewhat thin, so it's already pretty dry. So I'm not gonna have to really hit it with the blow dryer. Why do I want to be an artist? Yeah. I like being an artist. I like painting. I like making things with my hands. I know I can buy similar things, but there's just something about making it with your own two hands that gives you some form of sense of achievement. Makes you feel like you you did something, right? Makes you feel proud of what you did. It also yeah. It also calms me down sometimes. And you know why I want to be a space ranger? Why do you want to be a space ranger? Because I like it, Um, If it's Buzz Lightyear's the best. Buzz Lightyear's the best? Uh-huh. How are y'all doing today? Good morning, Cindy and Melissa and Callie. Looking forward to this. Well, Sharon, I have been, wait, Monday could not get here fast enough. This was a fun paint, I'm not gonna lie. So if you've noticed in the, my background, I already had one all painted up. I'm just using titanium white. I'm just using the big bottle of white to base coat this. Not a, any kind of special white, um, but for just because I can get titanium white in the big eight ounce bottles, that's what I'm using today for just the base coat. Raylan, can you like move your hand out of the way? You and that popsicle. All right, so we're pretty good. I'm gonna finish my second coat over here. It's already dry. And I'm just, I'm just kind of buffing this on. I'm not worried about massive brush strokes or anything like that. If you, if you want to avoid brush strokes or kind of streakiness, put on your first coat and then you can go back in with a light, sec, your light second coat with a two inch base coat brush. Just be careful with the white. It might be dangerous. I highly recommend having at least for a door, when you're painting door hangers, having at least a two inch base coat brush. I like these. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. Mommy, you can get them at uh, Michael's. Just, if you touch the white, it might be dangerous. Yeah, it might get dangerous. But I highly recommend these. They're, they're super cheap. They're two inches. A one inch brush, you're gonna, you're gonna be sitting here forever. <laughs> trying to get it base coated. This is just too big for a one inch brush. But if one inch is all you have, work with what you got. It's okay, it'll get the job done. You'll just do it in more brush strokes. Good morning, Stephanie. Watching from work. Okay, so should I not, should I not be loud? Did you bring your earbuds? Um, morning, Wendy and Raven. Good morning, good morning, Shirley. Cover your mouth, please. Gonna get this uh, hair color touched up. I'm gonna take a what it's gonna take a while, so I'm glad I have you to watch. Woohoo! I can't wait to see your uh, new do when you get done, Marie. Good morning, Christy Rayner. I'll be here for an hour. I'm in between clients. Ooh! So Marie Mosley is sitting in a hairdressing um, <laughs> chair, and uh, Christy is a hairdresser as well, so she will be uh, behind the hairdressing chair. Romo, baby. Romo, not today. That's not helping. Good morning. Watching while the teacher door hanger or oh, Miss Pam is painting teacher door hangers. Okay, so let's hit this with a blow dryer real, real quick, okay? Because we're about to we're about to dive into these techniques super fast. So what you're gonna need, <coughs> what you're gonna need, is um some fall colors. You do not have to use the colors that I'm using. The reason I'm using these particular colors is because I just I just pulled apple colors, like a, any color that you can get in an apple. You can get a yellow apple. You can get a green apple. You can get all different color reds apples. Um, my favorite apple is a pink lady and um, a honey crisp. And those are a lighter red. Well, then you've got red delicious. That's like the really deep, dark, almost cranberry red. Awesome. You can go play now, okay? No, you want to watch me paint? Yeah, I want to well, watch that one, but that, but that one looks really What if you put... We still got a little bit of wet paint. We're just letting that dry. Mom, so if you want the... If you would like to get the supply list, if you haven't gotten it already... I got a great idea. What is your great idea? What if you could put this damn green... 
Lego rainbow. No, we're not going to do that. Let mommy paint, okay? Okay. Okay, so it comes with your paint list. It also comes with our schedule for the live events. And then it also has the brushes and other supplies you may need, okay? So you can, um, when I'm done with the live, I will come back and just link that in the description itself. And you can grab that if you haven't already. But if you put the word studio, you will get the link to um, how to join the paint studio today. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about my absolute favorite crafty place in the world. And that's the, uh, the paint studio. Hey, Terry. Um, and it is the... Honestly, I am quite partial to it, but it's my favorite place. A lot of my favorite crafty people hang out in there. We have a grand old time. And what we're doing this week is very similar to what we do in the paint studio. We take a concept or a technique like we are this week, and we work on it through painting a door hanger. And then we'll work on it again through painting a garland. And then we'll work on it again by painting a porch liner attachment. So not only are we building a, a decor set that we can use to decorate our home or to gift to somebody or to put in our craft booth, but we are also working on a, a technique that we may have not been, um, that we may not have mastered quite yet, but by working on it throughout the month, you are for sure going to be able to master it. So if you put the word studio in the comments while we're here live today, I will come back after we'll, we're live and um, put the information to where you can get more info on what's included in the paint studio, but also how to join as well. I say I love the paint studio because we are a huge loving family environment first and foremost. Absolutely, Cindy. It is a massive family. In fact, we don't call ourselves members. We call ourselves a family because it really is a family. You love the studio too? Yes, you make grand entrances into the studio. Okay, so while we're um, chatting about the studio, let's go ahead and get to painting. So we're going to need... Baby girl, I am going to be very patient with you today just because I know you're super excited, but you're being very distracting. Yeah, so I need you to let mommy paint, okay? Yeah, I think I'm just hungry. Okay, well, we can go out to lunch. I have promised that girl. I have promised her to go out to lunch. She gets to pick wherever she wants to go um, as soon as we're done uh, uh, live here. So she gets to pick I whatever. Pick puppies, so yeah. She picked puppies which is a Mexican restaurant right down the street from us. And so if you're a good girl and let mommy work and, and do a tutorial, okay. we will go to Peppy's as soon as I'm done, okay? So why don't you go play with your Barbies until I'm done? Well, you've gotta be quiet. You've gotta be quiet because everybody has been super excited to learn this one, okay? Wait, are you super excited too? Oh, I've been excited. And mommy, I think you're too excited, too excited. You think I'm too excited? Yeah. Stop. Okay, so if you need the blanks for these, I can list those as well in the description when I'm done going live. In fact, if you put the word studio, I'll also put the links to where you can get the blanks for this. We offer it in an eight-piece bundle, so it's a, it's a one-click. You don't have to guess at sizes or anything like that. Okay, I'm just eyeballing about center. This does not have to be perfect, okay? I have made a spacer out of painter's tape. It's about, I'll tell you about how big it is. My door hanger is about 22 inches long on the longest edge, which means it's 22 inches long this way. Okay, let me pull this little spacer up. Yeah, we can make it in the middle. Let me see how big it is. Yeah, let's see what how big it is. It is about three and a half inches wide. So anywhere between three and a half to four inches wide, you should be safe. So all I did was I just stacked my painter's tape about three and a half, four inches wide. And that's what I'll be using as a spacer in between stripes. So we're gonna work on our first stripe here, okay? And our first stripe, let me find, our first stripe is this light red, and we are going to be using Santa red, okay? Oh, Mommy, um, yes, we are going to mix it to pink and mix it to that pink. Are we? We just might. We just might. Yeah. So we've got Santa red, 
we are going to be what I call ghosting it out. Good morning, Lisa, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Um, how much is the studio? Okay, so to register for the studio, it's $15 a month. So it's a monthly subscription. It automatically, um, it automatically renews every month on the exact same day that you signed up. So say today is the 15th. If you signed up on the 15th, the next, uh, next month on the 15th, um, and you pre-register for the next month. So if you register today, you're registering for September. But for people who registered this week, and we're only open this week, okay? So we will not be opening for the rest of the year. We will not open until 2023, and I have not decided what day quite yet. Uh, normally, it's the spring. We normally only open twice a year. I know, I know. <coughs> my lemonade. You're going to open your lemonade stand? Yeah, outside. Okay, so I've got Santa Red right here, okay? I'm going to take my two-inch base coat brush, and we are going to, I'm going to make sure my, we are going to add just a little bit of light buttermilk, okay? I told you that we're base coating in white. The white makes all our bright colors pop. We've got yellow. We've got light buttermilk. We've got all these colors and the green. All those colors on the natural wood color itself kind of dulls down because it's soaking into the wood. But if you put a white barrier between the wood and bright colors, it makes everything nice, bright, and poppy. And guess what? What, my baby? It's not for real life, and guess what? What? Somebody's gonna help me. So in, with reds, I don't typically like to add white to red. Why? Because it makes pink. And I don't really want pink. I want a lighter red. So I'm gonna add light buttermilk, okay? Now we are gonna have a light buttermilk stripe, but that's okay. That's also going to keep everything in the same color family by mixing the color that we're using over here into a color that we're wanting to lighten up. The color of so we're just gonna put a little bit of light buttermilk in there, okay? And I'm not gonna completely make a whole new shade. I'm just gonna mix it on my brush. Oh. And that gives us our kind of a, our light apple color, okay? make it pink. Well, it's not making it pink. And I'm going to brush off the majority of that oh, off mommy, in the center. I don't want to go straight. Mommy, I don't want to go. I do. I see that. I don't want to go straight to the painter's tape. If I can avoid it, I want to avoid it. Now that I have the majority of that paint kind of brushed off, I'm going so to. awesome. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. I'm going to, um, empty, what I call emptying it out in the center of the of the of the stripe. This is a wide enough stripe that I can kind of achieve that without it being a, a it hot like, mess. It looks like a wall. It, it, it looks like a door. It looks like a door? Yeah. Oh, the tape? It looks like a door, Raylan says. So now I'm just going to... Do some pink. That's going to help us avoid um, bleeding under the tape. Now, this is Dollar Tree Painter's Tape. It works well. Um, frog tape works better as far as reducing bleeding but it will also it's so strong a painter's tape it will pull your undercoat up so anything that's underneath the tape even though it's drying it will pull it up so you want to be ultra ultra careful about that okay so we are completely done with this stripe now i want you to look really close and i'm going to bring you down close okay we'll come back in just a second i want you to see where there's it's not a complete across the board shade okay we've got a little bit of darker red we've got a little bit of lighter red in here there's all different tones of this red that we've created in this coat right here okay and that's how i want it when you're doing barn wood um it helps to have different shades this is something that i call messy and lazy painting if you ever hear me refer to messy painting or lazy painting oh, come on, this man. is it you should do it we're going to blow dry real quick. Lazy painting or messy painting is just having multiple shades of straight from the bottle paint on your paintbrush and letting the paint in the wood do all the work of mixing. You don't want a complete new shade of paint. If you wanted a complete new shade of paint, what you'll do is you'll mix them on the palette itself. Like you would take your palette and mix it completely together before you ever touch your brush to wood, right? Oh, I'm so 
excited. Melissa just joined. Is there a Facebook group? Okay, so anybody who joins this week, you will be receiving a welcome email. The welcome email is going to have some um, important information for you. You'll be receiving it within 24 hours of joining. And you will, um, in that welcome email, you'll have a couple of things just to keep in mind before you actually jump into the group. But it will also have the link to the group in it as well. So, um, and by the weekend, we should get everybody to be admitted in. Normally, we made all new members wait till the first of the month when we open up. I've decided that this time we are going to um, allow new members to join before the, the current month is over. So not only will you be enrolling, you're, remember you're pre-enrolling for September 1st, right? That being your first technical month, you're actually gonna be getting in during August. So you'll be receiving August designs as a bonus. It's a, it's a, it's a bonus for, for hopping in during sneak peek week, okay? Usually you have to wait till the, the month that you actually registered for to get your first bundle. And it's all digital. You get the, the templates, the JPEGs, the color mock-ups. Um, I size them to the perfect size for you so you don't have to do any sizing. But you also get a 30% discount with Home Creations where I um, have partnered with to do blanks. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. But don't throw it away. We're going to use this again, okay? Um, you get a 30% discount with Home Creations on all studio designs. So it really that helps out so with the weird. with the um, the cost of ordering blanks. So I have painted this. It's completely dry. I'm going to put my painter's tape just going along the edge of that. You're measuring it? I'm not measuring it. I'm just, I'm, it's almost like I'm using the original red stripe. So the painter's tape was right here which allowed me to paint all this red. So I picked it up, I picked it up, and I shimmied it on top of the red. So the edge of the blue stripe is matching up with the edge of the red stripe, okay? I'm gonna take my spacer. Uh-oh, where'd we put our spacer rail in? Our blue spacer. Where'd we put that? I don't know. Oh, well, we need to find it. Quick, fast, and in a hurry, I found it. I hit it for myself. So we're gonna we're gonna take our spacer. Remember, it's about three and a half, four inches wide. Doesn't have to be exact. Anywhere within that ratio. I just ordered two blanks this weekend. Oh, Melissa, I'm so excited. They, I don't know if you've ever ordered from them before. They have the absolute best quality, um, and their customer service you cannot beat it. You just cannot beat Tina and her her crew. She has an absolutely amazing crew so and it's all family owned. So they are a completely family owned company, which just warms my heart because I love a good mom and pop, um, a good mom and pop shop. I have, please stop. Um, I'm looking at that dog. Well, there is no dust. There's no dust. So our next shade is our green shade and we're going to pull out our sour apple. So let's all get our sour apple out. All these colors that I'm using, they're all deco art, Americana colors. They can be converted over to Apple Barrel and Folk Art and, and Cream Coat, if that is even still a thing. I can't remember if Cream Coat is still offered or not. We are going to ghost it out as well, okay? Just a little bit, just the hair, because that's super bright, super duper bright. We wanna, we wanna tone it down just a little bit. So we're gonna take our light buttermilk again, and we're gonna put it just off to the side, okay? That's it, we're not in, like I said, we're not gonna go crazy, we're not gonna create a whole new shade to Wait, this. Mario, look, the green, it's on that side, look. It, it is, we've and got our clean brush. It looks like a broccoli. And we're just gonna put both colors on our brush. See, there's no rhyme or reason, there's just two colors on my brush. We're gonna take that off. Yeah, I'm mixing it. That's right, we're gonna let the wood and the the brush do don't all the, pink, the mixing. Mommy, don't get the pink. Don't cover the pink. I won't. Oh, I just be careful. Okay, I'll be careful. I'm gonna make sure that line. I'm not brushing in to the tape. I'm brushing along with the tape. That's gonna create. Um, that's gonna create the best atmosphere for not getting bleeds. Now, like uh -oh. I said, this is Dollar Tree painters tape. You use whatever painters tape you're most comfortable with. I'm not. 
I'm not married to any particular brand. You know, I'm not a hardcore ride or die for any particular painter's tape brand. I just use whatever I've got and I just, I, I'm very aware of um, how the ones I, I typically use act. And this Dollar Tree painter's tape, it, it gets the job done. Now, I do get a little bit of bleeding if I paint too heavy of coats. So I tried to, I have red, I'm picking it up somewhere. I think I'm picking it up off of my palette. So we're gonna try and be careful with that. Okay. Where, so, where? I'm picking it I think I'm picking up the corner. I'm picking up a little red, but that's okay. As long as everything is still wet, it, it'll, it will erase away. So I can just use my brush to kind of brush stroke it out. Mom, what color is next? What color is next? I believe we're gonna do yellow next. But we may, we may allow this to completely dry oh, yeah. and jump over here and do we this straight next. Santa red and, 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 and we have now. Santa red, we have sour apple. And we, and we need, so we Although I'm not, I'm not mad green. about this little bit of red streaking through. Have you ever yeah, seen a Granny got, Smith apple that wasn't green, quite right? And yellow, Please. Santa red, and milk. And, I mean, and butter, light buttermilk? So I'm gonna bring it down again. I'm gonna show you, I want you to see, and the glare may be a little bright. I'm gonna blow dry this so you can kind of get a good look at it. Because once it dries, you get a better, you get a better idea because all the glare from the wet paint is gone. Acrylic paint, especially matte acrylic paint, um, goes on super glossy because it's wet, but once it dries, it's super matte. So the matte will allow you to see all the different colors, especially when we're lazy painting. Okay, so you see how there's like a streak of, of lighter green and darker green. With the lazy painting, that's what we're achieving. We're able to get all this color definition without having to work super duper hard. Yay. Again, so, don't throw this away. We're gonna use we're gonna use this until um, it tells us that we need to change. Um, now, if we start getting some super duper um, horrible bleeding, it's probably because our tape is past its prime, and we probably need to get a fresh mommy, piece. But I try to make it the entire project without having to waste it tape. Like a pattern, it does look like a pattern, does it? Do you see? I see that. I don't think I was going to like green, but I actually Red. like it. I know, Yvonne, and I love, okay, so this green, I love, I love sour apple. Um, you can tone it down. It's super duper bright. I mean, in the bottle, it's kind of scary, right? Like that's, that's Halloween. You only use that for Halloween kind of color, right? No, that's witch's brew green, right? No, you can tone it down and make it totally versatile, right? No, that's blanket green, that's blanket green. That's blanket green? All right, so we're going to allow this to dry while we paint the this stripe right here, okay? So let's go ahead and... Mommy, how do you make paint? And like I said, we do this in the paint studio. We pick a, a design. I, I coordinate a design. I design an entire home decor set. It's a door hanger. It's a garland and a porch liner attachment. And all month long, we, uh, we go live twice in the group. The first live, we do the door hanger, and we spend the whole live just focusing on the door hanger and the techniques that are tangled up in that. And then um, in a couple of weeks after that, after you've had time to kind of knock out your door hanger, we go live again, and we paint the coordinating garland and porch liner attachment. They're smaller pieces, so we do those both in the same live. So you have two lives. And you don't have to worry. The lives live in the studio forever. They live in the studio forever. Now, the designs do graduate to the website, but you have two months before they do to grab them for free as long as you're a member. So you, every design that comes out during your membership, so as long as you're a member, you have forever access to the designs that you um, were a member of. So say you're a member of August, September, October, November um, of 2022, the designs that come out in studio, you have those forever. You do not have to purchase those. You have access to them. Um, 
as long as as long as you were a member of those months even if you get out you still have uh forever access to those now you won't have access to the the tutorials anymore because they live inside locked in the studio but every member has access to every tutorial so you can hop in and learn the tutorials to be able to use it on a different design say this to this technique that we're doing today is perfect for any like any basic shape you can do it on a pumpkin you can do it on an acorn you could do it on a candy corn how cool would this be in candy corn colors on a candy corn shape let's get the rest of this uh door hanger in the shot here because i feel like what is the price the price is 15 dollars a month and it comes out on the exact same day that you register. So every month, if you if you register today on the 15th, then on September 15th, you'll pre-register for the next month on, on September 15th. You Oh yeah, you also get a supplies list every month. You get a, co a color list, uh, just like you did with this, this uh, sneak peek week. All right, so for time purposes, we're gonna do the exact same thing while we chat. We're gonna paint, um, light buttermilk on this one so straight from the bottle of light buttermilk and this time i will be please i will be adding a little bit of white to my light buttermilk just to keep the the lazy painting technique um consecutive with each stripe mommy make it quick make it quick i'll try you're really hungry i'm really hungry too what are you going to order at the restaurant Puppies. Yeah, what are you going to order? So I've you got remember. light buttermilk and white. I'm going to start in the center and and Cheese. knock the majority of that Chilada. off. Chilada. Cheese enchilada, okay. With beans. With beans. And a taco. Oh, you're going to get a taco today too? And also some cheese. Some queso. That sounds like fun. No, cheese, cheese, and the cheese with my enchilada. Oh, cheese on your enchilada. You want a cheese enchilada. And I also want some beans. I mean, you want some beans and rice? Yeah. And that's it. So this color, I picked this color. I had a couple of people ask me what was this color supposed to be for. And this color I decided was going to be like the inside color of an apple, right? You know, when you slice an apple open, that's the color. Where do we find the, the design for sneak peek week? Okay, so Suzanne, I can link those here. Um, I can link those here. Studio members, if you are a studio member already, or if you hop into the studio, you get a 40% discount on all designs year round in my shop. So on my face, on my website, all templates, uh, all templates and JPEGs, because I list them separately, you get a 40% discount. So say it's a Friday and it's not, you know, all my designs go on sale every Tuesday and Wednesday. But say it's a Friday and you really need a design to fill an order that just came in and you're like, oh, Erica's got a perfect one over on Wallace House Designs. Well, you can use your studio 40% discount year round, no matter what day it is of the week, even if it's not a sale day where we do our BOGO sale, you can use your, your studio 40% discount. It's such a, it's such an awesome perk because there are times where you're, where it's Friday and you're no, like, I no, just feel like painting and I just want to do something very specific. And, we're not um, going to throw it away. We're not going to throw it away. That's right, Raylan. We're not going to throw it away. <laughs> we're actually going to bump it right back over here on the green stripe because um, it should be completely dry now. I'm not going to throw it away. All right. So there's. Okay, there's our green stripe. Let's get our spacer out. Let's see, we're probably gonna need. Yep, mm-hmm. Mom, don't make it hard. I'm not making it hard. See, we got a little bleeding here. That's okay, because of the technique that we're using today, all these little imperfections work in your favor. 
it work in your favor. No one's going to notice it. And if anybody starts inspecting up close on your artwork, they're not your friend and we don't let them in our house. Like if they're up, can, can you what? Can we have some music from Google? Can we have some music from Google? Not right now because Facebook doesn't like us to use music from Google. They will, they will shut us down. We don't want to go through that, do we? Yeah, but mommy, we didn't do that one before. No, I... but even when you were playing your Switch the other day, it didn't like the music from your Switch, and it messed up the audio, and everybody was having a hard time. So I've got a uh, sunny day. This is sunny day. No, it's okay. not. It's blanket. It's sunny day and light buttermilk, both on my brush. Yeah, it's blanket. Okay, and I'm it's just lazy blanket. painting that, just straight to the wood. It's a blanket one, too. It's a blanket one, too? Yes. I'm a so, this one. color is supposed to simulate, like, the golden delicious ones. Because sometimes you, you know, in, in kindergarten, when every year, it never failed, I saw kindergartners, um, they would always have an apple. Like, A is for apple. There's that apple, um, oh, curriculum. So that they could, one, learn about autumn and fall because all the apples that, that are harvested during that time. But they also do it for A is for apple. And my favorite ones are always the yellow ones when they, they color the yellow ones because you don't really see yellow apples too often, but they do exist. And I feel like they're a really unique addition to our, to our apple um, collection here. They get that. They get that far up in your business. They need, if they get that far up in your business, they need to go. That is right. If people, are, if people are measuring your stripes out, if people are highly inspecting every little um, possible, right, Lynn, please, baby, baby, let me talk. I'm going to make you go on if you can't be respectful. Um, if they if they can't be respectful of your artwork, and then they're not your friends, and I don't recommend, I don't recommend you let them in your house. <laughs> Just now hopping on, we'll catch the beginning on the replay. Yay! Hey, Sharon! So, like I said, if you're just hopping on, we're talking about the Paint Studio, which is my membership where I teach you how to paint every single month through painting a door hanger, a garland, and a porch leaner attachment. We, we pick a, a technique and I tuck that technique into every nook and cranny of a design that I possibly can and we practice it until the cows come home. We have a good old time knocking out techniques. We have done um, galvanized tin. That has been, so far I think it's the favorite of of all the designs that we've we've done this year so far is galvanized tin. We've done that on a couple of different designs just to kind of practice it. And we do revisit old techniques just so that you get multiple, um, multiple, seeing different ways of doing it. Okay, this is starting to get a little, my tape is starting to get a little warped. So we may end up having to get a new piece, but I think we can make it work. All right, so we are going to Mommy, do another nose? red stripe over here. Mommy, where's my gnome? Where's your gnome? Yeah. I don't know, baby. You can wait till I'm done painting. Okay, okay. All okay. right, we are going to take our uh, Santa Red straight from the bottle. Okay, remember we mixed it with light buttermilk over here, right? So there's our Santa Red. I'm going to pull a Lizarin Crimson, which is my darker shade of red, okay? So here's Santa Red. Here's a Lizarin Crimson, okay? I'm going to mix just a little bit of Lizarin Crimson. Uh-huh. And we're going to lazy paint that on there, okay? That'll give us a different shade, but in the same uh, color family, because the base color of both reds is Santa Red, right? We lightened it. We're darkening it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to paint too. You want to paint too? Well, you can paint when I'm done, okay? So we're gonna just throw it on here. I need a Christmas red. Ray. Baby. You need to go on because you're not listening. Mommy. I'm not gonna let you go to, to Peppy's. Okay, so we have our darker red. So it's 
Santa red, same red that we used here. Oh, hold on. Is this good, Mommy? Same red that we used here. We're just mixing it this time with a lizard and crimson. And I am gonna need two coats of this one just because with the light buttermilk, it thickens it a little bit and so it covers better. But with the reds, they are kind of finicky. Lizard crimson. Uh, okay, so Karen, a lizard. So think uh, think the word Elizabeth, the name. A, uh, like a, lizard. So I don't know where that name comes from. I know I've heard Bob Ross say it a million times, which is the only reason I know how to pronounce it. A lizard crimson. Oh, thank you, Terry. But I will forever call it lizard crimson from now on. Karen, you, I am, I am locked and loaded with that one now. I love it. Y'all know me, I like to make up words. So that's right up my alley. Here you go, Ray. Here's your palette. If you're just, if you're not gonna listen, I might as well concede. Hey, that, hey, that's my blue. All right, so here we go. But if you, if I accidentally paint on yours, you're just gonna have to deal with it because Mama's not painting a small piece like we're. Can like, you open this? No. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Usually I let her paint with me when I'm painting smaller pieces. There's more, there's more um, table space. It won't, it won't be mine, Mama. Let me just get her some paint going. All right, we have one more stripe, y'all. One more stripe. So we're just, we're finishing up painting this. I wanna make sure I have a nice, clean, lazy paint on this. Okay. Pick up our painter's tape. I'm gonna to switch to the other painter's tape. So let's go. I love this, this mount y'all. I don't know if y'all heard me talk about my new mount, but I'm in love with it. I just love it way better than my Mommy, Archon. You say, you say you're in love with it. I am. I love it so much. I just love how every angle that I can get without having to fight with the gooseneck uh, of the, me. of the other mount. Hey, Lynn, I got the pumpkin set blanks instead of the apples. Oh, well, everything that we do with the apples, you can do with the pumpkin. So, this, I was very strategic about that. I wanted whatever technique. I didn't want you to feel like you had to buy blanks or even had to buy templates to do this. I, I wanted you to know that you could do this on, and you could do this for Valentine's Day on a heart. You could do this on a, a Christmas tree with all different shades of greens. Um, you can do this on an ornament all different color um we're gonna pick up well, okay so hold on what color should we do over here what color should we do over here i think i think i'm gonna do the light buttermilk that's what i did on the other one i don't want to do this red it's all right mama but i think i will i think i will i think i'll do this red just to balance it out a little bit oh i got some on yours Mommy, actually looks beautiful like that. Please try not to get it on mine. I won't. So here we go. I'm just, like I said, our um, mock-up only has so many stripes. I think it only has one of each color. But because, you know, we're not worrying about being perfect. We're not measuring things out completely for um, perfection's sake. We're just gonna fit another color here because it just, it's one more stripe, about half a stripe more. Yeah. Um, so we're just gonna pick one of our favorite ones. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a, a true pattern here. Okay, I'll do Oh, I love it too, Melissa. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait till we get to this part because this is this is gonna be some good lazy painting too. Bye. You could shade in some yellow for Bye. the gala. Bye. Ooh, you could. I like gala apples. If I can't find a Honeycrisp or a Pink Lady, my, my third choice is a gala. I'm done already, What's Mom. your favorite apple? Does anybody have a favorite apple? I feel I'm like... I'm already, Mom. Oh, it's so pretty. You even did a happy face, Raylan. That's really cute. All right, so, painter's tape, we're done with it. We can now get rid of it, okay? Ow, I'm sorry. We're going to give you to death. So, to recap so far of what we've done, we've gone stripe by stripe and just painted... Um, each stripe, uh, Raylan, please leave that alone. 
That is not for you. Do not touch it. I need to wait for mine to dry. You cannot use that. That is for me. Okay. What is full for us? No, it's too big for yours. It's for mine. So, uh, for each stripe, we get what well, I just made. Uh, just a kind of a makeshift spacer out of stacking my painters tape together. I've just stacked it to be about three and a half to four inches wide. I'll go wash my hands. Sounds like a plan, baby girl. And with each stripe, I just spaced it out and painted that one stripe. Picked up all my painters tape, spaced it out, um, painted the entire stripe. Blow dried each individual one. And now we're at a point where it's it's time to make it look all chippy and barn wood, okay? So let's take a chip brush, okay? This is about a two, three inch chip brush, okay? And you can get them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I think you can even get some at the Dollar Tree. But you do want a good for a door hanger size. Now, if you're painting something smaller, obviously you don't need this big of one. But for a door hanger size, I do recommend bigger chip brushes, okay? We're going to take white paint. I'm going, well, no, we're going to take our light buttermilk. Double check. I'm lying. We're going to take our white. I'm looking at my, I'm going to take either snow white or warm white. I'm going to take warm just because it has a lot of reds in here, okay? And the warm white I tend to use with reds and yellows and, and warm sunsetty colors, okay? There's also a cool white. Which uh, this one would be considered a neutral or a cool white, which is your snow white. And you would use that with your blues, your purples, all your cooler tones, right? But you, honestly, you can use either one. It does not have to be perfect. So I'm going to take my white. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to dip the edge, of the, the, just the bristles in it. And then I'm going to take just some scrap paper, some, you know, a, a scrap palettes and I'm gonna just tap 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 the majority of that off okay you just want to get very little on your brush okay we're gonna Mommy, this like a bag. oh that's so cool we're gonna start at the very beginning and pull straight towards us okay now you can also do this with a baby wipe if you don't want these the harsh streaks and I'm gonna go to this instead of my puddle of paint. I'm gonna do, use that because it doesn't pick as much paint up. Okay, and I'm just gonna go over and over until this paint dries up because it will dry up because it's a super thin layer of paint. In fact, it's already starting to dry up, so I'm gonna go ahead and dip in my puddle of paint over here on my big palette. And I ha I'm using a very, very light touch. Now, it will not show up on your light buttermilk as much as the other colors, but that's okay. It will show up enough. One tip that I do recommend when you're doing like a chippy barn wood. Mommy, coming to spend the night. Who's coming to spend the night? One of my guests. Oh, that's okay. gonna be fun. Oh, she's here already. Okay, that sounds great. I'll go get her. Okay. So one, uh, one tip I do recommend when you're using a chip brush is to start off of the wood. Like my, my brush is about an inch above. Hey, Rosalina. And I go straight down. I try not to use a whole lot of pressure. You can always add more, but with a chip brush, it's really hard to remove. Okay. I go all the way from the top to the bottom in one stroke. I like to pull towards myself. I do not like to go across like this. If my if my stripes were horizontal, what I would have done is I would have turned my apple sideways and continued to pull towards myself. I do not like and do not trust my arm to get straight lines going horizontal. I trust it better, our arms, mechanically pull straighter lines when pulling towards our chest than they do going across. So just a quick tip from me to you on uh, keeping good straight lines. All right, so you just keep adding the white in super light layers until you're completely happy with it. And I think I'm getting, I'm getting to the point. Now I'm gonna make sure that I, I hit the edges really good. I want nice, bright edges. 
without without getting too crazy with it. There we go. I love it. I want to, I'm going to, I have just a little bit more white paint on my palette and I think I just want to brighten up this, this uh, layer right here just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. I love it. I'm done with this. We're going to put it in the water. Something about a chip brush. If you put it in the water, you have retired it for the rest of the day. It is done with its job. Do not, I would much rather see this get dry paint on it then be put in the water and you still need it for that project okay so there are two types of brush mamas and this is the one time where um being a what i consider a bad brush mama one that just lets the paint dry on their brushes or one that lets them live in water i don't judge look we all parent differently and it should be it's okay it's okay but um because i teach you how to properly clean your brushes if in the event you want to let them live in water or you want to let paint dry on them i i can show you how to clean them up thoroughly um a chip brush is the exception and you can choose whether you want to let it dry with this paint on it or if you want to keep it pristine and clean and there are ways of doing that um but I tend to just let mine dry. I have some that I do wash, my smaller ones I do wash, but something about the big ones, I just let the paint dry. That's no biggie. Chip brushes are so cheap that replacing them is no big deal. You do have to replace your chip brushes more often than any other brush. All right, if you have any questions, if I don't get to it in the live, promise, I will promise, 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 I will come back and answer all questions to the best of my ability after the live is over. But like I said, if you have questions or want more information on the Paint Studio, where we do this kind of stuff all month long, every month, we tackle a new paint technique by painting a door hanger, a garland, and a porch cleaner attachment. You can put the word studio in the comments and I will come back and link where you can get more information about the Paint Studio. Okay, so now that we're completely done with this, we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna flip it around because I like to paint closer to myself. I'm gonna flip it around. We're gonna work on our leaf and our stem, okay? So for our leaf and our stem, let me grab, let me grab my, my supply list. And I think my sweet baby girl has taken off with my supply list because it's not here anymore. Do y'all see my supplies? Do you see it? Holler at me if you see it, because I, I, oh, I found it. So, so far we've used our Sour Apple Sunny Day, we've used our Santa Red, our Lizard and Crimson, our Light Buttermilk. We need milk chocolate and raw umber. We're just gonna hit it up with some milk chocolate real quick. We're gonna base coat it. But I also call that color blocking. So the two, the difference between base coating and color blocking. Base coating is what we did at the very beginning when we painted the entire piece. So whatever project you're working on, when you paint the entire piece, we've got like uh, we've got um, milk chocolate, and I'm almost out of it. So it should get the job done. Um, I'm lying. We're going to start with our leaf first because our stem sits on top of our apple see our stem sits on top of the apple and the leaf it hides a little bit of leaf so let's paint the leaf first i like to paint in layers and so if something is tucked behind something else so it's like that leaf it's tucked behind this um it's tucked behind what is that called the stem <laughs> it took me a minute sorry i'm gonna pull my three quarters inch angle brush it's just a wider angle brush, and an angle brush is gonna get all these curves nice and clean. So let's use an angle brush. You can use a flat too, but the angle is gonna work a lot better for you. I'm gonna use my um, Hauser Light. So we first started with our, this is the Sour Apple. That's our Sour Apple Stripe. This is Hauser Light Green, okay? So there's a totally different tone to it. This is more of a foliage, like a, like a live plant color. This is more of a, um, this is just a brighter tone of, of, of a green. And so we don't want to necessarily use that bright neon green for our foliage, for anything that, that, that would naturally be a living thing. We want to use something that, that would, um, 
be a better fit. So that Hauser Light, hello. Hauser Medium, and Hauser Dark, I have hello. found. Well, hello, my sweet baby. Hello, baby. <laughs> yes, I am. Those tend to, in my opinion, tend to be um, better foliage colors for plants, leaves, uh, flowers. So we're just gonna, we're gonna color block this, which is just a fancy word for base coating a particular element. It burns. All right, studio members. So my current studio members, my girls, I love my family. I have a, I have a surprise coming for y'all at the end of, of this tutorial. So the very last thing we're gonna do to this, um, I've got a little, I got a little surprise for y'all. Um, so one thing that I, one question I've been getting, this is not the surprise, but this is another surprise I've already told them about. Um, so that's a base coat, let's blow dry a little bit. So one surprise I've already told them about that they're getting this month. In the studio, we do bonuses. Sometimes we do two, uh, one or two bonuses. Sometimes you get a whole week's worth of bonuses. It just depends on what's going on um, in my, the other aspects of my crafty world. Um, so I've gotten a lot of questions about where's the, where's the template for the garland? Where's the files for the garland? We found the apple, we found the pie, but we can't find the garland. And that's because garlands debut. They get their first appearance in the studio, no matter if they are actual garlands for the studio, or if there's something that I'm teaching somewhere else in uh, the interwebs. I, I pop into groups all the time and I teach other groups how to paint as well. And a lot of times I'll, I'll paint a garland because they're smaller pieces and they're easy to, to make out of other things if you don't have access to wood. Um, although we all have access to the amazing home creations where we get all our wood blanks from. But it, say you wanna do it on some mixed media paper. It's a smaller piece that you can just practice the technique that I'm teaching on a mixed media piece. Well, I usually, gift or bonus the paint studio with that design as well and they get free access to it for that month right so um no there's no difference here only paint studio members will have immediate access it's one of their bonuses this month to the apple slice garland that we are painting for sneak peek week this week okay it will eventually come to the website but it will not be on the website until paint studio has had exclusive access to it so current members will be getting access to that this this week um they also have a couple of i've got a couple of other bonuses uh come hey Rumble baby you're about as bad as ray lynn um they've got a couple of other bonuses coming just because of sneak peek week Baby, you need to go lay down, okay? Go lay down. I know, I know. Mama's been paying attention to someone other than you for too long. You just want some more attention, huh? Go lay down, please. Raylan, can you let Romo outside, please? Thank I think that's what he's asking for. Well, thank you. Um, so they will be gifted and given as a bonus the Apple Slice Garland template and JPEG. For them to use before it hit, ever hits the website like i said in 60 days we'll, we will be offering that on the website we will be offering that on the website but uh paint studio members will be getting it as a bonus until then and so the other surprise that but if you hop into the studio during stinky week you will also have access to it through um paint studio access as well as being a paint studio member or family member. I am so glad you did apples for fault, Marie. I am so happy. This has warmed my heart. I love, I have loved this design. I have been waiting to, to debut it. All right, so we're gonna lazy paint. Let me look at my original over there. So we have our leaf, okay? It's kind of flat looking here. Let me get y'all a little closer to this leaf so that you can uh, really get a good idea of how I'm painting this because we just color blocked that, right? We're about to get, we're about to do some really cool, some coolness here, okay? Let me flip this around so you get a better look. That's right, there we go, there we go. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna dirty up my brush. I did wash it, but I'm gonna dirty it up, okay? 
my brush look y'all this one needs to be clean this one has not been cleaned in a while look how it's all fraying i'm gonna have to reshape it no big deal um i have tips and tricks on how to reshape your brushes the proper way so we're gonna put we're gonna dirty our brush what i mean by dirty your brush means if you have something base coated or color blocked like we do the leaf you just kind of you just dip it in that original color okay Oh no, bummer, waiting to get my laser fixed. Oh, is that Deidre? Deidre, I saw where yours is supposed to be coming in this week in your new tube for your laser. Man, I can't wait for it to come in. Um, okay, so you're, we're gonna dirty up our brush. Just means that we're going to dip our brush um, in the original paint color, which is this Hauser Light. We're gonna put another color on our brush. Okay, so there we go, that's Hauser Dark. And I put it on the heel, which is the, the short end of our angle brush. Okay, so we've got that, and we're going to just swipe it. And if it's not swiping perfectly, that's okay. We can add either floating medium or blending gel. And floating medium and blending gel, they're two different things. Here's blending gel. Floating, in, floating medium looks exactly the same, but it says floating medium. We can, di I just dipped my brush in blending gel, and I'm gonna dip it in the same two colors again. And what that's going to do is it's a dry time extender. It makes my paints wetter, okay, without changing the color. If you notice, here's floating medium. They're folk art brand. And here's blending gel, okay. I used this one, okay. Ignore the clearance stickers. They rebranded. And so those bottles are a little out of date. But look how easy this goes on. Okay, one tip that I want to recommend to you when you're painting, if an element like a leaf and the apple have a divot like this where they meet right here, you want to make sure you, you be very careful to make those lines meet. You don't want to uh, make your leaf go this far in and stop right here. You don't want to stop right here when your leaf really start, stops right here because then all of a sudden your, your painting looks, it, it's just off, right? It doesn't look right. And it's going to be very noticeable to the naked eye. So with that first little swipe, you wanna be super duper careful of keeping it nice and tight where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna clean my brush because we did about half the, the leaf in that Hauser light and hauser dark on both of our on both of them on our brush we use the blending gel which is a dry time extender okay it's folk art brand we use the the blending gel okay okay well you go to bed over there she's just pretending to lay down and then we've got floating medium we're going to use floating medium later but we're going to we're using blending gel right now so let me take the floating medium away we're using blending gel right and all I'm doing is I'm putting it on my brush. So I put it on my brush. I'm going to dip the, um, again, we're going to dirty up our brush with the light, Hauser Light Green. We're also going, uh oh, I don't know if that's gonna work. Hold on, I accidentally dipped it in red. That's not gonna work. So let's re, let's re, um, I need to put a little bit more blending down. Raylan, can you let Romo in? Yeah, I think you should let Remo in. Oh, let Hayden do this. Hayden's not home, baby. Where is he? He's at school. He She's such a dramatic little girl. It. No, baby, I'm not, I can't get up right now. I can't get up either. Okay, well, you just you just sit there then. Okay, so just like we did with the Hauser Dark, mm -hmm. we're going to put light buttermilk. Okay, so we've dirtied up our brush, which means we dipped our entire brush in the Hauser Light, which is our base coat color. And now we're gonna put some highlight shade. This is lazy painting, okay? This is not technically, um, this is not technically a realistic way of shading. This is just making all of those little colors work together on the wood. This is definitely a step that you can, you can skip. You do not have to do this. This is just a little extra bonus how-to Okay, and now I'm just kind of mixing all those together until they are completely um, seamlessly blended in. 
okay? It's definitely a little bit more of an intermediate step. You can, if you liked, or if you're more comfortable with just leaving it color blocked and using a paint pen later, you can, but the, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want to avoid using the paint pen. My goal is to not use the paint pen at all unless I'm using it for lettering, which we will not be doing today. I'm going to show you a really cool stenciling technique. All right, so there we go. We are completely um, blended in. And the blending gel really did help keep those colors wet while I needed to work on them. So now we're going to blow dry. Now because we use blending gel, that's a dry, that is a dry time extender. And the blending gel takes longer to dry. So we're going to be blow drying a little longer than normal acrylic paint. That's just the nature of dry time extenders, okay? Okay, so Blair. Blair's asking, what's the difference between blending gel and floating medium? Good thing is in this tutorial, we'll be using both. So you'll get to really see them side by side, side by side comparison in actual application, okay? So blending gel keeps your paints wetter longer so that you can work by, to create looks like these, okay? If you live in a dry climate, that also helps to add it to your brush before you add it to your paint. Like dip it in some blending gel, then dip it in your paint um, to help your, your paint stay wetter longer so that you get a smoother application. I know my cousin lives in a very dry climate. She loves to paint as well but her paints tend to dry faster than she can she can paint. So she's painting a stripe, the first couple of brush strokes are completely dried before she's done painting the entire stripe. So uh, blending gel is a really good thing for her to use because of where she lives. I like to use it to create, because uh, I live in a very humid climate, my paints tend to stay wet as long as I need them to, but every once in a while I wanna create a look like this. That's what blending gel would do. Floating medium, we're about to use to actually shade, add some dimension to our apple itself. I'm gonna let Romo in while this uh, dries because Miss Raylan's being a little persnickety. Raylan! Poor baby, it's just too hot for her to leave you outside like that. Okay, so let me blow dry just one more time. We are going to add, we're going to add in our um, stem, which is going to be using milk chocolate. I love lazy painting too, Sharon. It just, it's easy dimension. Easy dimension in one brush. Okay, so I'm just shaking my, my light, uh, my, my milk chocolate. I keep trying to call this light butter milk. I don't need a lot which is good because this is almost empty. I'm trying to get all of it to the, yeah, that should be, that, that one is gone. We're done with that one. All right, so we're gonna bump down to a half inch angle brush. And bump down to a half inch. We were using a three quarters. Now we're using a half. I'm just going to color block this. Don't forget your secret word is studio. If you have any questions about the paint studio, um, where I teach you how to paint new techniques every month through a three piece decor set, then I would highly recommend putting the word studio in the comments and I will come back and link where you can find more information about what's involved, what's included, um, how to join and anybody who joins the paint studio during sneak peek week will gain access before September so you'll actually gain access by this weekend okay we, we have we have a goal of getting all new family members into the studio before Monday so if you like I said we're gonna be painting all week long here on uh, Wallace House Designs we will be painting an entire home decor set with bonuses. I'm gonna show you some bonuses here, okay? So we're gonna be painting a door hanger, a porch liner attachment, a garland, and then some surprises. We got some bonuses coming. That's our first coat. This is gonna require two. Um, it's $15 a month. You get the templates 
So you get all the digital files. For $15 a month, you get all the digital files. It does not include blanks, but the perk of being a studio member is you get a 30% discount on ordering blanks. And with um, Home Creations, they already are the cheapest place in town to order blanks. And they have amazing quality. And by being a studio family member, you get a 30% discount on top of their already really reasonable prices for any studio design that you have that, that we offer each month. No matter whether you are a member of that month or not, you have access to all, um, all the blanks at 30% off. Another perk of being a studio member is wow. that you get 40% off of any digital file that you need from my shop, whether it be a template or a JPEG. As, uh, for the month that you're a member of, I release all that to you during that month in your monthly bundle. But say you hop on and you, you really like uh, March 2022. You weren't a member of it, but you really like that design and you watch the tutorial because you have access to all the tutorials no matter what month you are a member. It's like, maybe you really like that and you really want to paint it. Well, you get a 40% discount in my shop to go grab that each month. Uh-oh, some red snuck in there. That's okay. We'll make that work. We'll blend it in. Good thing red and brown are, they work well together. No biggie. No biggie at all. So I'm just color blocking this in. Just means I'm base coating one element, which is the stem. We're about to throw some, some lazy painting on this just to give it some roundness and some, some dimension. Yes, I, if you are asking any questions that I haven't gotten to yet, um, I will um, come back afterwards and, and I'll get in the comments and I'll answer all the questions that I physically can. Um, if I don't have the answer for it, I'll find it for you, okay? I will get you connected with where you can find that, that, that answer. Okay, so that is base coated, okay? So it's color blocked. Let's grab that same half inch angle brush. Let's grab that half, same half inch angle brush. And we're going to add the the milk chocolate and light buttermilk, okay? I'm almost completely out of this milk chocolate, that's okay. We are almost done with it, I'm not gonna need it. So I've got, I've dirtied up my brush with the milk chocolate and I just added to the heel, which is the short end of my brush, my angle, please stop. The short end of my angle brush, I have added light buttermilk, okay? And I'm going to pick this side. I'm going to pick this side because this is the curved part where the light's going to hit it. And I'm just going to walk this towards the center, okay? And that's going to lazy paint that on and I'm going to make it work, okay? All right, cleaning my brush. I'm gonna grab my burnt umber or raw umber. I think it's raw umber, yeah, it's raw umber. So here's our milk chocolate. Here's our raw umber, okay? So one's lighter, one's darker. I'm gonna do the same thing with this as I did with the, uh, the light buttermilk, okay? I'm going to take my half inch angle brush, the one that we've been painting the entire stem with. We've used one brush for this one element, right? I'm gonna dirty up my brush by putting our base coat color on there, which is the milk chocolate. And then on the heel, which is the short end of my angle brush, I'm going to put raw umber, okay? And I'm going to lazy paint that onto the very underneath of that curved, of that curved, um, and I'm gonna walk it out towards the center. And all that's going to um, blend in with that other color that we mixed in to make the lighter shade. And that creates the roundness of our, of our stem. The light is hitting it over here. The shadow is created over here. And you're good to go. 
I am gonna tone that down over here just a little bit. I just have a clean brush. I'm just gonna tone it down. We'll go get another one from the bathroom, baby. Okay. Get another one. Now we're not done with this. We're not done with it. Okay. We need to blow dry this completely. Okay. We've got it exactly the way we want it. Uh, once you're happy with it, let it dry. What can I mix together to find it? Okay. So Sheila, instead of raw umber, you can use, um, <laughs> you can use really any dark brown you want. Okay. So this is, no, not that one. Cause that's got a lot of purple in it. You can add, um, Dio dioxine purple, this really, really deep dark purple to uh, your milk chocolate and it will darken up your, your brown. Um, you can add a navy blue, just a drop. You do not need a lot, just a drop, okay? And just add a drop until you're happy. Um, but honestly, there's so many deep dark chocolate browns in the deco art line. I don't know why they have that many, but they do. And I'm happy about it. Um, they have a lot of dark chocolate browns to pick from. You do not need specific, you do not need specifically the raw umber. You just need a deep, dark chocolate brown. But a drop of navy blue or a drop of purple, that will, um, that will deepen your milk chocolate to the color that you need. Do you just need me to put your hair in a ponytail? Yeah, like this. So okay. Cool. Let me put her hair in a ponytail real quick. It takes just a second. Are, are you almost done? I'm almost done. I really am. We just have to do a little shading and then add our words, and then we will be done with our apple. It's All an right. apple. It's All a right. rainbow Here we go. apple. It is a rainbow apple, isn't it? Okay, so same brush. We have our half inch angle brush. Half inch angle. We're going to we're going to dirty our brush with our milk chocolate, okay? We're just going to put, that just means we're just dipping it in milk chocolate, not a lot. And then we're going to dip the, the heel of our brush in the raw umber. I, Sheila, I would look at, um, and I'm just going to just paint in that oval at the very top of our apple stem. That will create the look of it being cut, okay? So that's all that's doing. So we wanna do all our shading and lazy painting, dry it, and then add the little oval up here and that'll um, that'll create the look of the apple stem being cut. Um, I was gonna tell Sheila something. What was I gonna tell her? Oh gosh. Apple Barrel has bittersweet chocolate uh, or semi-sweet chocolate. I think it's bittersweet. It's similar to raw umber. So if you can't find it at the in the deco art line anywhere locally to use, Raylan, let's not mess with mommy's um, notebooks. Um, you can definitely find bittersweet chocolate and that should be similar enough. But I get mine at Hobby Lobby. So I'm if you're looking at Hobby Lobby, I bet you you can find it. Okay. Let me do this number because we are gonna go full table again. Don't forget our secret word is studio. If you want more information on the paint studio and how to join, it's only open this week and we will not open it again until 2023. And I promise you the price is going up in 2023. Oh, We've God. already decided. I, I, I need to see it. We've already decided that the price yeah. will be going up. And that's only because um, during 2022, we, all, we haven't had uh, a full year's worth. I just, I told myself once we had a full year's worth of tutorials and access, um, to, to different designs and the, and the discount to be able to get those designs that I would be uh, raising the price just to compensate for all the tutorials that you will have access to. But I'm a firm believer that it should not cost, uh, an arm and a leg to enjoy a craft, to enjoy uh, learning how to craft. So uh, it won't be going up a whole heck of a lot, but it will be substantial enough that $15 is a steal. And it is $15 a month uh, till, till the end of this week. And then it's shut down until 2023 and we won't open again until 2023 when the price goes up. I'm finding raw umber online. But it's like, ooh, are you on Amazon? Don't, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, look at, 
Look at Joann's too. I bet you Joann's has it. But like I said, Apple Barrel over at Walmart, you can get it uh, bittersweet chocolate, and it's it's extremely close. Yeah, if I look at some of my favorite paints on Amazon, uh, right? Let's not mess with mommy's um, fancy pens, okay? You can use that pen. And you look, you have your box of craft supplies up there. I'm making a carrot. Oh, so pretty. You have your box of craft supplies up there. Go over to the counter. And you're not looking hard enough. Okay. So now we have. Uh, let's go ahead and start some shading because before we do our words, we really do need to get some shading on here to, to really make this live enough. So we're going to take our angle brush, okay? We're going to take, oh, let's say a three quarters. I think a three quarters will be a good, a good size. So that's the color that we were using to do our leaf. Ah, uh, Betty, uh, 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 yeah, you can use that. There you go. Those are markers. They are. You are correct. They're not markers. They are markers. Okay, so I, the way I like to do shading, okay? So we've messed with blending gel, right? We're about to, we're about to dive into the world of floating medium now. So we're going to use floating medium, and we're going to take some colors that are a shade or two darker than our base coat colors, um, and we're going to use some floating medium to easily shade, okay? So, uh -oh, dry paint. So we're going to dirt, uh, we're gonna dip our brush in the floating medium and we're just gonna, and I like to use these uh, meat trays that I get from Dollar Tree, okay? You get about 30 of them. I think it's about 30 of them for $1.25. And I like to use them because they're white. They let my paint stay wet longer, okay? It's like using a foam tray at a, at a paint party. All right, so I put my blending, uh, not my blend, I put my floating medium on my brush and I just kind of worked it into my brush. And I did that for a couple of reasons. Oh, my purple. Um, what it does is when I work it in with no paint on my brush, it tells me that my brush is clean, okay? When we go to float or to shade, add some color to really make this stuff pop and be really dimensional without using a paint pen, um, we need to make sure our brush is completely clean and does not have dirty paint water. If this had dirty paint water in it, then doing this with the uh, floating medium would have told me all the sins that my, my brush is holding. And right now, perfectly clear, we're good to go. So for our, for our, let's start, actually let's go in the order that we painted them in. So let's start with our Santa red one. So we lighten this, so guess what we get to do? Since we lightened this original color that was Santa Red with light buttermilk, guess what its shading color is? For, it's, it's no fuss, no, you know, don't have to guess. There's no guessing. It is Santa Red, okay? And we're going to dip. I don't know. What drawing are we talking about? The one from church? That's in Daddy's car. Okay, well, you can go draw another picture. There's plenty of paper over there. It's over there on the couch. I don't know where you put that particular one, but you can draw another one, okay? Yeah, but, okay. but it's on yellow. Okay, go get another piece of paper. It's okay. I'm letting you go get another piece of paper from my notebook. All right, mm -hmm. so we have the floating medium on our brush, and I dip the heel, which is the short end of my brush, um, in our Santa Red, okay? And I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna work it into my brush a little bit, okay? I'm not picking up anything else. I'm just adding it, just. Oh, and I dirtied up my brush. So, over here, you see where there's Santa Red, clear Santa Red. I was not paying attention, and I got a little too overzealous with my paintbrush, so I'm gonna clean my brush, get all the paint out. Please stop. I'm so sorry. Stop it. Okay, so that's clean. On the heel of my brush, I'm going to work it in just enough, okay? And I'm going to go along the painter tape line that we created here. And I'm gonna pick up paint whenever I need it. I don't have to reload it completely. 
she's getting frustrated. She's getting tired, she's getting hungry. Okay, so I'm just doing a light coat. Okay, see how this side and this side look totally different, okay? So I'm going to, on the toe of my brush, I did not dip the whole thing in blending gel. I just dipped the clean side of my brush in blending gel, just to keep that blend, not blending gel, um, floating medium, just to keep my brush nice and, I hate this word, but we're gonna use it, nice and lubricated. <laughs> it's, a, it's a word that makes me cringe. I just hate it. It didn't work out well. What didn't work out well? Okay, we'll do another one. It's okay. They don't have to be perfect. You can do another one. And I'm just going to bloat it in on top. I'm being very careful to just stay on the red. Try not to cross the line into the green. Because we're going to come back and we're going to shade the green too. Okay. And the, the more you use this product, the more you get comfortable with it. And if, if you're thinking, wow, she's really just slapping that on there. One, I only have a little bit of paint on my brush, okay? Two, I've been using this stuff for a long time, okay? So I'm kind, I'm kind of comfortable with it. And I am going to also do the bottom and the top, but I wanna make sure I dry this completely where they're gonna intersect because I do not, when I cross over these vertical lines that I just painted on here, if they're still wet, the blending gel, oh gosh, why am I calling it blending gel? The floating medium that I've used to uh, shade in the very, this right here, it will get erased because the floating medium will help erase it. So we're gonna be, we're gonna blow dry that like we just did. And then we can go back over it going horizontally to paint, to shade the very bottom of our apple, okay? We'll do the same thing up here. This is already dry, okay, see? It doesn't take long to dry. We're gonna go right under. Okay, I need a little bit more paint on my brush, a little bit more blend, uh, floating medium. I only dip paint in the paint side, floating medium on the floating medium side, okay? The reason I usually use a little bit of a smaller angle brush, but these are really big sections. I want to make sure that we get nice soft shades, okay? So let me get you nice and close so that you can see a little bit of how that's gradually going from the darkest shade out on the outer edges and it's slowly fading into our original project that we painted, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm probably gonna give just a stripe. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so Miss Pam over at Young at Heart Creations, precious Miss Pam, I love Miss Pam. Uh, Miss Pam says, does when the price goes up, I don't, huh? I'm so sorry. Baby, you need to quit whining. Nobody likes a whiner. I'm so sorry. Well, then go somewhere else in color. If you want it to be quiet, you need to find a quiet place. I'm so sorry. So, um, so Miss Pam is asking, do I have an annual, um, annual price? As of right now, I do not because the price is already the lowest it's ever going to be. When the price raises next year, I will be adding a, an annual um, an annual option, uh, but the price is the lowest. It's technically my founding member price. So the people that originally hopped in with me got it at fifteen dollars um, a month, and that was the cheapest that I was ever going to offer it because I wanted to do that as a thank you for trusting me, even though they were hopping in on the very first month when there was absolutely nothing in the studio, and they've been growing with me, um, but. When the price raises next year, I will be offering a annual at that point. But at right now, it's I honestly it's the it's the cheapest it's ever gonna be. So but does it lock you in? Was her second second um question. 
And as I load my brush with a little bit of my, um, what color did I do? I think I did the Hauser Dark. I think I did the Hauser Dark. So we're gonna come over here, yeah. I added a little bit of Hauser Dark to the heel of my brush, just like we did over here. We're gonna do the same thing for the green, okay? And I like to do short, choppy strokes. Don't worry. If you don't like how it looks, it's just wood. We can always go back and repaint it, right? You can sand it down and start all over. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is barn wood. Barn wood or ship lad or however you want to call it. It's imperfect, right? It's it's chippy. It's it's not it's not pristine. So this this technique is really forgiving. Okay, so there we go. Wanna hit that right there. Add a little bit of floating medium to the floating medium side of my brush, a little paint to the paint side of my brush. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I want to touch them. Don't touch what? Okay, so I'm adding just a little bit. Can I just color it? Yes, as long as you put it back, okay? So we've done this side. Remember, let's do this side as well. And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll um, shade the very tip top. Okay, I'm getting a little of my yellow here. That's okay, you can always take a baby wipe and clean it up if, if you cross the lines. What floating me? Okay, so to answer someone else's question, I think was it Yvonne that was asking it um, earlier? To answer someone's question from earlier, floating medium is the clear stuff in your paint. So every bottle of paint technically has a little floating medium in it. It's the clear stuff that makes up your paint. It's the clear stuff that makes your paint. Um, well, I got the wrong end of my brush dirty. Um, you've got color and you've got the clear stuff and they mix together and they make the color, right? The, the bottle of paint. Well, the floating medium is like a bottle of paint with no color in it. It has the same dry time. It, um, it, um, so there's no dry time extending property to it like the blending gel but it does allow you to shade things effortlessly like this. It helps you add Mom, dimension. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of a baby wipe and clean this little bit up. And it's easy to clean up. Oh, look at your picture. I can see a little bit of it through the back. Oh, here. So that just cleans it up just a bit. Ooh, it's so, oh, I love the rainbow. I love it, baby girl. I want to pick on this pilot. Okay, so there we go. There's that one. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. See, it's a little heavier here. It gets a little lighter there. We do want to um, blow dry it because now that we're done with the vertical stripes, we want to blow dry it so we can do our horizontal sides of it. So let's do that. Let me smooth this out a little bit. There we go. Let me take my baby wipe and clean up on that yellow. The good thing about uh, floating medium is that it cleans up really easy. Say you cross over the line. As long as your base coat is dry, which our yellow is, we can just take a baby wipe and just kind of lightly buff that off. We don't want to buff too hard because it will pick up enough of that yellow paint and it'll start going back down to bare wood. Okay. Okay, the email process. Mom, it's for Mr. It's Pedro. It's for Mr. Pedro? He's going to love that. 
So make sure we take that to us uh, with us when we go to lunch. Okay, Mr. Pedro is my friend from high school that um, he works at that restaurant that she has picked for lunch. Um, so the email process. Okay, so I don't know if you're asking about the email process for um, joining or the email process each month that we uh, do for the files themselves. So the files are uploaded into the group. So it's easy. they're announced in the group each month on the second of every month. We do our, what I call a file drop. Um, and then sometime during the month, it's not a set day. Um, sometime during the month, I email that same file drop to you so that your files live forever. So say you forget to download them from the group and you need them six months from now. You're just like, oh, I really want to paint that. I didn't have time when it first came out, but I really want to paint that. And, um, but now they're no longer in the group because they've graduated to the website. Well, the, the file drop has been emailed to you at some point during that same month. All you have to do is I give you the word to search for any file drop that we do in the, in the studio and your files live in your email address. So they get emailed to you during the month as well, but you can also grab them in the actual Facebook group too. Now, if you're talking about the email for joining, your email, your welcome email gets emailed to you within 24 hours of uh, registering. Okay, so for the file, so we, we answered that. Perfect, thank you Terry for catching that one for me. Um, is there a reason you do not shade while you have your painter's tape on the truck. Well, you can, you can, and it would make it a lot easier, but I wanted to, when I teach it, I want to explain it. Um, so I want to show you, I want to show you all of one step and then explain completely the next step. So we base coated, right? And then we color blocked and then we distressed and now we're shading. And so you can shade while you still have the painter's tape on. The problem is you haven't distressed yet. And so we would have had to color block, distress, shade. Pick up our painter's tape, color block, distress, shade. And I really wanted my distressing to have um, some, some cohesiveness. I wanted them to be very, very um, even in the pressure that I was using. And if I did it individually for each stripe, which I did do, when I um, painted my mock-up, um, it turned out okay. I just felt like the distressing would have turned out better if I did the entire thing all in one, one step. But that is a good question. You can do this step when you are um, actually painting each stripe. I'm gonna soften this up. There's some harsh brush strokes in that. So I just have a wet brush. It's not like super soppy wet, it's just damp. Um, but the thing about floating medium is so easy to clean up. So if you, if you don't get it pristine, it's no big deal. No biggie. I love this look too, Terry. Isn't it beautiful? And it's super, super easy. Um, okay, so for our yellow, we're gonna use a color. It's one of my favorite colors. It's a mustard yellow. It's called Marigold. So this is, the, this is Sunny Day mixed with a little light buttermilk using our lazy painting and then distressed with white. Now we're gonna shade with some uh, Marigold. And when you use floating medium, you use, look at that. That was just a drop of the red. And we didn't even use half of what we put out. You use more floating medium than you use anything else. Okay, so there's, it's clean. We've got a clean brush. So we tested out our brush. It's super duper clean. Here's our marigold. It's a beautiful mustard color. Okay, and we're just gonna go through the same steps. We're gonna just, with light pressure, that's something I don't think I've mentioned yet. I do use a light pressure. And all this is doing is it's just creating a little bit of depth. Okay, it's just creating a little bit of depth. It's not, it's not making it super heavy. It's not making it dingy looking. We're just creating a little bit of visual interest with our shading colors. Okay, so there's one, one side of our yellow. Okay. Normally I would flip this over and I would pull 
because I like for my, my shading color to be on the left side so that I can see it. I'm right-handed, and so allowing my hand to shade towards the right over here, um, I'm, it's, a, it's a blind side. There's a blind side there. And, but just for, just for demonstration prop, uh, purposes, without having to make you dizzy and seasick by constantly flipping the, this around, I'm trying my hardest to, to leave it be. Just let it sit in one spot. All right, so there's our vertical our, Yeah, yeah, our vertical stripes. Now we gotta do our horizontal pieces, so that means we've gotta blow dry, right? Right, Maria. I, okay, so she says that the, the shading is what really makes this piece stand out. Let's be real. This is a super simple design. It's an apple with some barn wood stripes and some dry brushing technique. But the part that really makes it pop is making these planks look 3D, right? Making them look like they've got a, like a, a little bit of a shadow from being side by side. And that's, that's really what's making them pop. You're right. I love that. I love that, that you see that. And it's such an easy technique. It does take some practice and it does take some, some, um, thinking ahead, but it's not so hard that you really need to be a super talented painter to do right. Talent is learned in my opinion. If you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to put in the work to be good at something, then you've already told yourself, I'm gonna be good. Come heck or high water, I'm gonna be good, right? And so that's what we're doing. We just put in the work. And in the studio, that's why we paint a couple of things using the technique of the month. Um, that's why we do different projects. And the fact that they coordinate together just makes the projects worth doing, right? It makes you wanna do them because you're working towards not only a uh, project goal like getting all of the month's designs done but you're also working towards practicing a technique with um with each piece okay so that yellow is done we still need to do these three stripes but they'll knock out really fast because for this one oh, we should have done this one at the same time as this one so let's go ahead and go back and do that since that's already on our palette We've already got the red there. So floating medium, Santa red. It's not gonna take but a second. See, I went over the yellow, no big deal, right? Watch this, baby wipe. We will wipe it away. No big deal. Now, if I wanted to be super technical, I just would have bumped down in brush sizes to make sure that my brush didn't cross over this yellow line, but it's no big deal. It's, easy, it's an easy fix, right? Let's blow dry that and do the vertical side. And with this particular design, when we do the, because of the stripes, since we're going stripe by stripe, we're shading the edge of the door hanger as we go. So it's not like we're having to get bust out a paint pen and um, tell your eyes where to stop looking because the paint, that's the job of the paint pen to create um, a stopping point for your eyes to stop saying, this is the shape, right? This is the shape of the design. My goal whenever I paint is I'm not against paint pen. I use them. I've got a whole bag of them. I love them. But when I paint something, I really don't want a harsh line. I really want, um, I really want my painting, my, my painting technique to do all the work that the paint pen, um, kind of helps out with, right? All right, so I'm gonna take my straight from the bottle alizarin crimson. We're gonna, we are gonna mix it a little bit. Take a little bit of alizarin crimson because remember we, this is Santa Red with alizarin crimson. I feel like for it to really pop, we need to deepen it just a little bit. So I'm gonna take 
my dioxin purple, okay? And just the tiniest little drop, just the tiniest little drop. It doesn't take a lot. This is more paint than we're gonna need in general. So I'm just going to make sure my brush is clean. Dip the heel, which is the back end of my brush in the Elizur and Crimson. Also pick up just a little bit of purple, okay? That's gonna deepen that red color just enough without it being super, um, you don't wanna add black. Black, black uh, is too harsh of a color. I'm gonna start about midway through this, this edge, okay? And again, I'm gonna keep my baby wipe handy. Keep my baby wipe handy so that I can clean this up. It's okay if you cry. I want I'm doing this on purpose so that you can see. Watch. No big deal. We can clean it up and it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Floating medium cleans up. We put with when you use floating medium, you're putting such a white coat on that cleanup is super simple and you don't have to work too hard. Keeping a clean baby wipe, which this one's a little bit past its prom. I need to pick up some new ones because I have about two baby wipes left in this package. Um, keeping clean baby wipes around will help anytime you have to cross a line like that. Okay, we're gonna add floating medium on the toe of my brush, which is the floating medium side. A little bit of our Red and purple mixture. The orange got old. What? The orange got old in your bathroom. The the orange is old in my bathroom. Yeah, so I threw it away. So you want to have some food now? She just threw my deodorant away, y'all. That was actually a brand new bottle. Okay. What if you buy another one? What if I bought another one? Well, I wouldn't have to buy another one if my current one was still. Y'all, don't let me forget to go get that out of the trash can. I love this child. I love her. She starts kindergarten on Wednesday. I, I did yesterday. She starts kindergarten on Wednesday. She went to her orientation day last Wednesday, which she got a good taste. It was a full day of just her and five other friends that are gonna be in her classroom. And um, she was, she fell in love. She loves kindergarten so much. She really, she was very upset Thursday when she did not get to go back. So I'm very excited for her Wednesday when she gets to go, but I think, I think it's time. <laughs> she is throwing urn away for no good reason. All right, there we go. So that one's shaded. We have one more stripe and then we're completely done with shading. And then I'm going to be doing a super cool uh, stencil technique. Oh, I, I promise you, you're gonna wanna hang around for that. Oh. Super cool stencil technique for our wording. What? Go. Go where? The puppies. That's after we get done painting. If you let me finish our project, we'll go to Peppy's. The faster I finish, the faster we get to go to Peppy's. All right, so our next color is fawn. Okay. You can use fawn, khaki tan, of course, khaki tan. Burlap is a good substitute. So if you can't find fawn, burlap's a good substitute for your light buttermilk color. Okay, I think this is it right here. Can you pick that up for mommy, please? No, I am a robot. You're a robot? I'm sorry. So I just need one little drop. I can do that. We're gonna put it on the heel of our brush, which again is the short side of our angle brush. And we're just going to prime our brush with it, okay? And we're going to just add it. Okay, the brush is drying out a little bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit of floating medium. The way you're able to tell if your brush is drying out is if the paint is not spreading out as far as you think it should. And you should get pretty far on one load of your brush, okay? Like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments. Even if I miss them during the live, I will come back and I will answer you directly 
in the comments after the live is done. If you put the word studio in the comments as well, I will be dropping a link on how you can find out more information on the paint studio, all the things that it includes, um, and how also how to register for it. It's $15 a month. It's a reoccurring payment. So every month on the exact same day. So say you, you uh, whatever today is, today is the, the 15th of this month. So next month on the 15th, Mommy, it will pull. Yours. This is mine. That is yours. Um, it will pull on the 15th of every consecutive month. And you can cancel anytime. You are not locked in to a contract. You can cancel at any time. I do not like how this is turning out. This is super heavy. I wanna to tone that down. Let me show you how you turn that down. You add just floating medium to your brush, okay? You don't have to wash your brush. Keep a dirty brush. I have not cleaned it, okay? I'm just going to go straight into a good bit of floating medium and I'm going to wet, wet it. And I'm just gonna start pushing that paint around. I'm reactivating that paint, okay? And if I get super messy with it, no big deal. I can take a baby wipe. See, I got super messy with it right here. I can take a baby wipe and just kind of clean up where I want to clean up. That by reactivating the paint that you floated with, um, it pushes it around. So it softens it out. It kind of it kind of floats it a little further down the uh, down the line, and it softens it. I want to do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of floating medium, and I'm going to reactivate this paint. And I'm just I'm just pushing it around. I'm just thinning it out a little bit, okay? And it's just going to thin it out just enough to where it's not so harsh. All right, so now that we have our floating medium, okay, there we go. I'm just gonna add just floating medium to the edge of my brush, because this is still a little dark. It's just going to water it down just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing up here. Go underneath the leaf. Okay, instead of dipping into the puddle of, of uh, fawn, I'm pulling from where I added it to my brush. So right over here on this little strip where I added it to my brush. There we go. So now our entire door hanger is painted. You can leave it just like this. You do not have to add words to it, but we are, okay? Um, and we're gonna do a super easy, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, um, sometimes in the paint studio, I offer, if there's words, not every time, but if I feel like it's gonna make it easier for you, if there's words um, on your design, and say like this, this is fall, sweet fall. Okay, you're not supposed to be behind me. Um, Mommy, I, I got your blending gel. You got my blending gel? Yeah. Okay. I got some on my paint. So, so this is fall, sweet fall, right? So that's a pretty versatile, that's a pretty versatile um, sentiment. I call them sentiment. Saying, sentiment, um, wording. If you're not a big hand letterer, and everybody knows me, I'm not. I like to use stencils sometimes. Sometimes I'll take my, my graphite paper or I'll get an etched blank that has the words already on it and I'll take a paint pen and I'll outline. Um, but I wanted to show you how to do a drop shadow with a stencil. Super duper easy, okay? It's a super easy way to stencil a drop shadow in because this design has a drop shadow. So our wording is black but our, um, there's a drop shadow to it. So you can either hand letter your, your words on if you're a, a hand lettering artist, like my, my good old friend Marie or my friend Jennifer. Um, they like to hand letter, but your girl here does not, okay? I was just, that's not my thing. Anybody watch TikToks? It's never been my thing, not into it. 
not approved by me, right? Like that, y'all, We, if you watch TikTok, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm gonna show you a super easy way to make your drop shadow without paint pens, okay? Ooh, full card gels, what? Oh, I'm not gonna have to go through these comments to see what little tips and tricks y'all are dropping like hotcakes in there. Okay. So we're gonna take our sponge. Now I have used this sponge and I think actually, hmm. Okay, so I get these at Dollar General, okay? These are my favorite makeup sponges to do stenciling with. This one's super damp. I washed it. I feel like it would bleed if I used it. So I'm not gonna use this. This is from the Dollar Tree. This is just one of the generic makeup sponges that feel like memory foam and that is the key to these sponges. You want them to feel like memory foam, okay? If it doesn't feel like memory foam, it's not going to work well. So I'm going to take, remember we use this to do our dry brushing. I'm going to dip my brush in white. I'm gonna dip it in white and then I'm going to pounce it and get work that paint into the sponge as best as I can by knocking the majority of this paint off. And I'm going to set myself up for success. I do not want this uh, stencil to move. I cut this out on my Cricut, okay? I have two Cricuts. I have the Cricut Joy and I have uh, the Cricut Maker, okay? I'm, I use this, I use my maker to make this, okay? And I'm eyeballing it. It's about center. I'm not worried about true center. I'm just, I'm gonna tape it down so that it doesn't move. And I'm just gonna work lightly around. And I'm just gonna get a nice little light layer of white, okay? I'm using very light pressure. I'm not really pressing down hard, okay? I'm not pressing down hard. I'm not loading my, my stencil applicator, which is a, a makeup sponge. I'm not adding a lot of paint or product to it. I'm using super light layers, which I just got that all over my door hanger. Hold on, let me fix that. So that's gonna upset me. Good thing I taped this down so I can fix any little uh -ohs like that without shifting my stencil. Okay. okay. That's okay, I'm not using that palette anymore. I'm done with that. Okay, I'm gonna use So I'm just gonna be super careful. So remember when I said that my, my studio family was gonna get not only the, um, the apple sliced garland as a bonus this month, I'm also going to upload this stencil cut file. So it's gonna come in SVG and JPEG and PNG. So no matter what kind of stencil cutting machine that they have, um, they will be able to cut out a stencil. It's gonna have all the bridges and everything already in it. If they need the wording for the door hanger, they already have that in the template JPEG if they if they purchased it, because remember this was not a, a studio design. This was an Erica's template tribe design that we we curated together to make a to make a um to make a um a decor set. But they will be getting this stencil cut file because this is a versatile one. It's fall sweet fall. They could put this on a, a pumpkin. They could put it on an acorn. They can put it on a fall leaf. What else can we put it on? What screams fall to you? That if you were to put fall sweet fall, it makes sense. An acorn, a fall leaf, a pumpkin, uh, obviously an apple. So I will be adding the SVG, the PNG, and the JPEG of this stencil cut file, which means it has all the bridges in there. So all the little, like the inside of the A, the inside of the E's, they don't fall out, right? So they'll be able to cut that with their Cricut or their Silhouette or whatever stencil cutting machine that they have and make it super, a sunflower, Maria. Yes, a sunflower. A sunflower is the most versatile flower in home decor because it's spring, summer, and fall. It, it can span three quarters of the year. So a fall, sweet fall. You can do a sunflower, put fall, sweet fall on one side, flip it over, 
paint it again and put like um, a, a springy summery saying on it. Okay, so I'm just lightly, we're gonna make this a drop shadow. So I'm not, I'm not spending a whole lot of time on this. I'm just putting a nice little light layer of white and anywhere where I feel like my stencil's popping up, like right here, I'm just using my fingernail to hold the stencil down so that nothing pops up. I'm, I've got a tape down. You don't have to tape it down. I am comfortable doing this without it taped down, but it does make me feel better with as big as this stencil is to be able to have two hands to work with, to kind of do like I'm doing, to be able to hold it down in places where it could possibly pop up. Okay, so I'm adding white to my sponge. I'm going to tap the majority of it off and lightly come in and add. Okay, so we are going to be doing, this is our drop shadow. This is not even the full stencil yet. We're gonna use the same stencil to do a drop shadow, okay? Like, we don't do a lot of stencil, uh, stenciling of words. I do, I love using stencils. In fact, I use, uh, I make throwaway stencils all the time. If I'm gonna make a, a handful of door hangers and I just wanna um, not have to hand litter all five door hangers, I'll make a quick stencil. Can this be a door Yes, ma'am, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. We're gonna put that here to dry, okay? Okay, to be our door Yes. Um, mommy. That's okay, that's dried on there. Oh. Okay, I'm adding white. We still have to do this fall down here. I'm light, light, light. Super light pressure. No, I don't want to take that one off right now. I want to finish this one. Are you excited for puppies? I'm so excited for puppies. She calls it puppies. I just like puppies. Okay, and I'm going to... Now, stenciling, floating, all of this is light layers, right? We're using super light layers, so this up here is completely dry. So this fall, completely dry. If I needed to go back and do a second layer, say I wanted this to be stark white, which I could care less, I don't really care for it to be, I could come back up here and start my second layer because it's already dry. Remember, wet paint moves wet paint, so we don't necessarily uh, want to do anything over a wet coat of paint. I like wet on wet techniques for lazy painting, stuff like that. But when it comes to keeping things looking nice, clean, and pristine, you really want every particular layer to be completely dry before moving on to the next step. Um, bonfires, football, sunflowers, ball leaves, pumpkins, apples, corn stalks, Indian. Oh, ooh, Sheila, look at her just rattling off all those little, little, uh, I'm working from home today. I'm trying to follow along. Did you mention where to get the Mylar? I did not. And it's not because um, I don't use any one particular Mylar. Um, I get mine off of Amazon. I have been in another group where she has sworn us to secrecy not to release the Mylar <laughs> uh, place. And I would tell you, honestly, um, but I don't remember because it's been so long since I've ordered it. I ordered such a huge quantity of it. I'm still working on that. And um, I don't remember where I ordered it from, to be honest. But I, in the studio, we don't typically use any one particular Mylar product. I have test driven some different stencil materials that are not typical stencil materials. And we have found that manila folders, like the legal size manila folders from Dollar Tree, they work really good for a, a good uh, temporary stencil, like a good throwaway stencil. Like I was saying, I like to use a throwaway stencil a lot because I have the file, I can cut one out, no big deal. I prefer something that's not sticky, so I don't prefer vinyl because you can only use that once. My throwaway stencils, as long as I dry them flat, I can use them as many times as I want. Okay, so this is this is pretty good. I'm, I think I'm done with the white, okay? I'm gonna set this off to the side. We're gonna blow dry this just a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm just drying it. This is low heat, it's not. I'm just drying it so that when I do move my stencil, nothing, nothing bleeds. 
I'm trying the stencil and the, I'm a horrible stencil mama, so do not try, don't listen to me when it comes to stencil care tips. I, I, Y'all ready? You ready? Are you ready? Ta-da! Look how cute! The white alone looks really cute, but it doesn't pop because we got some bright colors there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stencil and to create the drop shadow, we're going to just shimmy it ever so slightly and I'm gonna use this top work wall because it has some straight lines to it okay so that's no we don't have a problem so I am matching it up completely so I have it in its original position right I'm gonna move it up just a hair like north and then we're gonna go east just a hair okay just a hair okay and then I'm gonna tape it back down Yes, ma'am. Can I, I help I you? I think it looks beautiful. I think it looks beautiful just like this as well. But we need one more. This is the last step, okay? So I'm going last to snip step. the very edge of that off. Well, can, I, can I do it? Absolutely not. I am almost done. I'm going to grab lamp black, which is just, you know, straight black. They also call it ebony black. It's just black, right? I'm going to take my sponge. And I'm gonna do the same thing that we did with the white. I'm gonna sponge it on here. I'm gonna always like to load it twice on the very first initial sponging and knock the majority of it off, okay? Hello, babe. So that's good um, with light, super light pressure. We're gonna go over the entire stencil one more time, okay? And this will create our drop shadow. We don't want to use a lot a lot of paint. We don't want to use a lot of pressure. Yes, ma'am, can I help you? Look, please. Oh, you're so silly. Can you put that back where it goes, though? Yes, the fabric is going on a pumpkin. You think the fabric's going on a pumpkin? Yeah. All right, so by shifting it up a hair and over to the right a hair, you are creating, you're leaving that just a peekaboo of white you're just leaving a little peekaboo of white, okay? Mommy, and you'll see what I mean by when we're completely next. done. Mommy, which color is next? Which color is next? No, we're totally done with colors, okay? I'm going to pick the largest color Okay, but uh, like I said, in the paint studio, when it comes to Mylar material, we don't usually use, I don't usually re recommend or or um, there is one on Amazon that I've used, and I do like it. The only thing I don't like about it is when you get it, you can't really use it straight out of the box because they send it in a in a coil. Um, I like to use at least five millimeter, if not thicker, like maybe a hair thicker. Four millimeter is a little too thin. Four millimeter is, is it's super thin. Okay, so let me show you. Now it's still wet, it's still wet. So let me let me not shift that yet. We'll do the big reveal at the very end. I thought I could, um, I thought I could shift it just enough so you could see, but I think it's gonna, I think it's better if we just wait. Fall is my favorite season, followed closely by spring. I I'm originally from Missouri and love me some fire red and orange. Oh, Sheila, I love fall leaves. Um, we live in Louisiana, so we don't get a true leaf, uh, fall leaf season. The, it lasts about three days. Like, that's about it. And only certain trees. Because we have a lot of evergreen trees here, like pine trees, um, mimosa trees. Things that don't have the traditional fall leaves on them, so they don't change in fall. We have a couple of uh, tree cool. species here that we... Okay, I'm not going to my puddle of paint. I'm just coming over here where I sponge the majority so I can control how much I'm putting on there. Didn't I tell you we might go get a new video game today for your Switch? Yeah, but well, fine. you're you're making it. You're ma with your attitude. Y'all should see that. With your attitude, you're making me not want to go get that for you. No. 
Well, then you need to go and play and be a good girl. I'm almost done. Look how close I am to being done. Oh, me, this numbers are so hard. Numbers are so hard. You're so dramatic. Stop okay, so do you see just the little peekaboo of the, let me see if I can get you close. Let's see if I can get you close. So do you see the little peekaboo of color there? Imagine the same peekaboo on the opposite end of the of the stencil. So like over here, there's just being a little peekaboo of white. And as long as you do nice, clean, light layers, uh, your white should be nice and crisp. Okay. Your your colors should be nice and crisp. I do like to walk my hand, especially with a big stencil like this that has a lot of loop de loos. I like to walk my fingers along with the stencil wherever I'm stenciling so that it doesn't pop up. Okay. Put it over here. No. I'm accidentally pick it up a little bit of red every once in a while, and that's not gonna that's not gonna work well. The trick is making sure light, light, light paint, light, light pressure, mm -hmm. and just take your time. A stencil can can go super quick for you, but if you rush it by using more paint than you need or using more pressure, thinking that you're 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 like, oh, I'll just knock this out a little bit faster. I'd rather see you do a coat, coat and a half of stenciling than have to do a lot of touch up because you rushed the process. This will get super clean edges. And even if it's not perfect and you get a bleed here or there, it's a lot easier to clean up one little bleed here or there because you did it properly. Um, then having to clean up the entire thing. Okay. Once we get down to this fall, it's gravy. Like, it's super fast. The scripty one is taken. Scripty fonts on a stencil take a little longer because you've got to strategically hold down. You've got to hold down your stencil so that it, the scripty loop de loop parts. Raylan, can you leave that alone, please? I'm trying to leave it. Baby, I don't want you messing with the scissors. I don't want you to get hurt. Okay, I think we need sharper lines. Yeah. Oh, these ones are sharp. Oh, yeah. They're sharp. They're grown now. We're almost done with sweet. We're on the very tail end of the t of the T. All right, let me bump back up. You got a good idea of what we were doing here. I did it. And now I'm gonna do Tommy U one. Okay, now I'm gonna go back over a little bit wherever I, black shows once it's completely dry. Black shows um, where it didn't get full coverage because it'll it'll be kind of um, splotchy, and it's black. It gets very good coverage, so I'm just gonna go over the little spots that are dry that I feel like eh, I kind of might want to touch up, and I'll wait for the tea. The tea needs to dry, so while I'm waiting for the tea, let's go ahead and do fall. This last little bit of fall, okay. Light, super light coats, especially when you just dipped your brush or your, your sponge. Super light coats, super light taps. So, so close, we're on the, t we're on the home stretch, y'all, and I will do a huge reveal to show you how easy it is to get a nice little drop shadow without having to break out a paint pen.
Now say you can't see through your stencil. Say you use a, a, a manila folder from Dollar Tree, well, mommy, if like you, I recommend sometimes. If you mix black with white, it makes it gray. It does make gray, doesn't it? That's weird. So you can't see through it to do the up and over, but you really, yeah, you can. So remember when I showed you that um, in the negative space of the stencil that you could see the little peekaboo of color? That gave you an idea of what the peekaboo of white drop shadow. If you can make sure that the peekaboo of color is nice and clean and even, then your peekaboo of white should be nice and clean and even if you got your stencil super straight, okay? So let's do our big reveal. Are you ready? Who's ready? I need a little bit of a drum roll. All right, here we go. So with the stencil, you wanna go straight up. Now I'm going to take my stencil and I'm just going to lay it off to the side to dry lay it completely flat. And to complete the look, I'm not big on bridges, right? Sometimes with certain designs, you can leave the bridges, which are these little negative spaces between your loop de -loos, um, that keep the little centers in. I don't like that. That drives me crazy. So I'm going to take either a round or a filbert. And I think I'm going to use a filbert if I can find it. Or you can take a nice little round, um, maybe like a four or a six, and I probably will do that. Let's do let's do the round because I feel like I can get a nice cleaner round. Um, let's see. My, my rounds are hiding from me. Or you can even use a flat. Like here's a flat. So since we've got some loop de loos I don't want to. I don't want to use a flat. I want to use a round. Here we go. This is a four. Let's use this one. Okay. You want to start with your white. This is so weird. It's so weird. Look at it. This one. We're gonna take our white. I love. I see. And with our white and our round brush, we want to dip it in and roll it. And we can Mommy, connect, look, Ray, baby. My look. We're just gonna connect. It's mine. We're gonna connect <gasps> on the uh, just on the bottoms. You don't have to connect completely with the white because remember, it's just the little peekaboo. We just have a couple of little loop de loos on the E's, the A's, and the loop de loo of the W. There's not a lot. So we need. And I'm using tools. super light pressure. Look at my. Oh, she wants you to see her her design. You mean sculpture? Her sculpture. She called it a sculpture. And the trick to getting nice clean is to roll that little roll trick where you dip it in the paint and you roll the majority of it off. Okay, so you you dip it in the paint like this off to the side and then you roll your brush and pull it to a point. Okay. And that's how. So let's blow dry that. We did all our white. Now we're going to drop shadow all our black, okay? Now we're going to fill it in. Oh my gosh, Juanella says she loves it. You can't see the whole apple? Oh, Miss uh, Miss Jacqueline says beautiful sculpture, Raylan. All right, so we blew, we yeah. blow dried all our little white pieces, okay? Oh, I mean... Don't forget the S. Oh, yes. Thank you. The S. Who told me that? Who? Uh, Juanella and Robin and Terry. Y'all are lifesavers. Thank you. Quality control is in the house, y'all. So we're going to dip in the white. We're going to dip in the white and roll, making sure to keep a really nice, clean tip. And we're just going to connect where that drop shadow is, okay? Again, we're gonna blow dry that, and then we'll come back in and fill in the rest of it with just the straight from the bottle black. Thank you, Jerry. So that way you're not having to paint all of the white um, because you done? really don't need it. You just need the little little hairline of where that drop shadow is gonna be. Done? Almost, baby girl, almost. When you need a hanger? Now I am gonna, I'm probably gonna opt for my, no, let's continue with the round. The round is doing just fine. All right, so we're gonna go 
go in with the black. Usually I would thin my black down, but we didn't thin it out for oh, the stenciling. Fine. So I'm not gonna add water or blending oh, gel to it. Fine. It does look fine, doesn't it? So I'm going to just, I'm just connect the bridges, okay? With a nice round brush. If I was making a smaller version of this and my bridges were smaller, I would probably use a liner brush instead of a round brush. Raylan, whatever you're doing, let's please your, stop. Let's put your hair back. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back over here and very carefully, like I said, you can use a filbert brush if you have more control over a filbert. But we're just filling in our bridges and like uh, you wanna dip it in the paint and then roll the majority of the paint off and keep the tip nice and pointed. Raylan, you pulling my hair Mommy. is messing um, Wait, Mama. my ability to paint a straight line, sweet baby. We need that. Okay, so we'll put this hair over there later. Shift the piece. Okay, here we go. Raylan, please stop. Okay. Baby, you're pulling my hair. That hurts. Okay. And I can only paint um, being inflicted with so much pain. And that, that, you've exceeded the limit. Thank you. Please don't touch my hair. I won't lick it. You won't lick it? Well, thank you. I, I do appreciate you not licking my hair. <laughs> it, it's, um, the, my, okay, so there we go. We're my, just, my tongue is wet, so I'm going to lick it sort of off. We're just touching everything up with the straight from the bottle jet black. This is a Deco Art Americana lamp black, also called ebony black. And I'm just taking my time. When you take your time, you are more likely to be pleased with the end results on these, these small little details, right? So I'm just connecting the dots from one side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge. And when I mean bridge, it's just that little little hash mark that we took out to make the stencil connect all the loop-de-loops. Okay, one more and then we are completely done. Our door hanger will be ready. Um, who wants to add the hanger to it? So let's take a vote as I finish the A. Should we do twine or should I show you how I, I add my wire? So twine or wire? There you go. Either one will work. I have a stapler and some twine. We can definitely add staples and twine or we can use the drill and wire. All right, our bridges are completely done. Okay, we've got two for wire, three for wire, four for wire. This may be a dumb question, so I will preface it with that. <laughs> Hold on, it's, it's disappearing on me. I don't use stencils much, nor do I have a machine to make it. Why do the, uh, why do the spaces occur? So say, look at this A. If I, we didn't have those spaces in there called a bridge, then that, when we cut the stencil, this A would have nothing but a big circle in it. There would be no, the inner, the, the center part would be completely knocked out and there's no way to put it back. With the spaces, it creates just enough of a bridge, which is why they call it a bridge, to hold that little section that you want to keep in there to where all you have to do is do a little touch up like we just did. I'd rather do a little touch up than have to guess um, how to hand paint that center back in. I think twine will be more fitting with the style of the apple, but we have more votes for the wire. Um, I can do a tutorial on how I use twine on another door hanger and I promise to do it. Let's go ahead and use the wire. Let's go ahead and use the wire since it did get, since we voted and it got more votes. I do agree with the twine uh, situation though. I feel like it would be more fitting with the rustic-y look of our design today. 
I will say I used twine on the other one, my, my uh, first mock-up version of it. And it does look very, let's think about it this way. Was that Jacqueline or Juanella that said that? Um, the, the wire kind of looks galvanized too, and that's kind of a rustic -y look. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Okay, so y'all don't forget the secret word for today is studio. If you have any questions or would like more information on the paint studio where we paint um, uh, home decor sets each month with a paint technique like this involved, and this is how then I can drop uh, a link on where you can find out more information and uh, how to register after I'm finished with my life. I'll come back in and individually link it for anybody who asked for it by putting the secret okay, word studio in the comments. Now, now. And you only have to do it once. Once you do it once, you don't have to do it again. You're locked, you're locked in. And to answer, um, I think Miss Pam's question earlier, because I forgot to answer it because a little sweet kindergartner was was talking to me. Miss um, Pam asked me if, if you sign up during sneak peek week this time, which is the last time to sign up in 2022, in just a second, um, we are raising the price in 2023 when we open again. This is the last time we're going to open before the next time that we raise the price. Um, you will be locked in at the $15 a month, okay? When the price raises, as long as you're a current member, hold on, as long as you're a current member, your price will not raise with the increase. Now, if you hop out of the studio and you hop back in after the price increase, then you will be locked in at the, the most current price at that time, okay? So we're going to take, I'm gonna flip this around. Gosh, I just love how that drop shadow came out. Um, I'm gonna, yes ma'am. Can I do that with you? In just a second, okay? So what I do is I have a scrap piece of wood that Miss Raylin has lovingly just uh, added her little touch to. Um, I just have a scrap piece of wood. I, when these get too gnarly, I throw them away and I add a new one. That's okay. You can paint the next one. Um, it's about two inches, okay? No, mama. It's about, really, it's about it's it's just a scrap piece from a two, uh, a two by four, right? Means it's the same width as my um, Dollar Tree painters tape. So what I do, just to keep it flat, because I like to keep things flat when I drill or I staple is I like to put my my painter's tape down at the foot of the bed and put my block and my, my holes for my drill at the head of the bed, right? Let's think of it like a bed. You got the foot and the head. And I'm going to find a spot. Normally, you would put it on the most northern spot, but this leaf is not centered. So we're going to actually put it on the, the apple itself. And I'm going to pick, I have a little hand drill. I got this at Harbor Freight. Hobby Lobby has one too. Um, it's cordless. I like the one that are cordless instead of corded. Normally I opt for corded. Mommy, this is cordless can I, can I for the hand one because it's not very heavy. So we're going to just find a spot to drill. I go about a half an inch down. About, and then I'm, so I'm drilling over about the midway of the S. Again. Hold on. Okay. Can I help you, mommy? Sounds like I need to um, mommy, can I, can I do plug that it up and recharge it. Mommy, can I do that and you can do the next one that's closer to you, okay? So the reason I put this little block behind here, when you when you drill into a piece of wood, the 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 bottom when it, the drill goes through the bottom, it does what I call a blowout. It blows out the wood. Um, it splinters really bad. So I put this scrap piece of wood behind it. The drill, the last piece of wood that the drill touches will be what splinters. So if I put a scrap piece of wood behind it, then it will not splinter my actual art piece. It will splinter this. And since this is so thick and it will never reach the other side of it, it's never gonna splinter anything, so I avoid splinters altogether. Um, mommy. Yes, my baby. Oh, we're talking about something. We're just okay, so now I have this side, and I'm gonna try and eyeball, uh, eyeball about a quarter of an inch. Hold on, let me position it, then you can help me, okay? I don't want you to get your fingers stuck. I'm gonna eyeball about an identical spot. Again, they don't have to be perfect. Mommy, it needs to be perfect. It does not. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put it about a half an inch down from the edge of the wood. Okay, and even if it stops, no biggie, okay. I'm going to turn it off and pick it up. Make sure that it went all the way through. It did not. Okay. That means I need to recharge this thing because it's I haven't charged it in a long time. Oh. Take it out of the wood. All right, that went all the way through. But okay, let's see. Let's brush it off. Okay, what do you end up? You see, we get a nice clean hole, no splinters. Okay, we're done with this. We can put we can put our drill and our scrap wood up. Okay, I do need to recharge it. I love the fact that that's rechargeable. Now, before we start adding our wire and all that, let's get this thing prepped and ready to go. For door hangers, I like to spray seal mine, but you can brush seal it. Um, I recommend Liquitex. Um, high gloss for anything that goes outside but let's go ahead and clean up our edges so I want you to look right here see all that paint that that got on the edges right here see how just kind of grainy looking and it's not very it's not very clean and professional looking we're gonna take no not that one this this is a very specific marker I get the furniture repair markers from Dollar Tree and I take the black one. There's two different sets. There's a light color and dark colors. I get the dark color package. There's three pins to a, to a set. I grab the black one. It's the only one that, that matters. I throw the other two away. They don't work as well. The black one is perfect. You can also use a very chunky paint pen. The paint pens tend to be expensive. This is a dollar 25. Even with, um, and I just go, I just run it along the edges. I just lightly run it along the edges. You have to make sure, just like a paint pen, because this kind of acts like a paint pen, you need to make sure that all the paint on your door hanger is completely dry before you do this part. Otherwise, you're going to gunk up your pen. And mommy, if you talk so much, you might lock your voice. That is right. And I am getting kind of hoarse here. So, um, so all I'm doing is I'm just lightly running along the edge and cleaning up. This gets you a faux laser laser cut look. It, if you don't have a laser cut blank, by adding this dark brown color to the to the very edge of your door hanger, it not only cleans up all the that paint residue on the edges and it makes it clean and, and nice and pristine looking, it also gives you that little look of it may might have been laser cut, right? Um, if you do have a laser cut edge and you started off with dark edges, well, guess what? This is going to make you end up with dark mm -hmm. edges so that your, um, your door hanger Mommy, why, why, doesn't you, look so messy on the edge. And it does, it does make a difference. Like you. It does make it, especially when it's hanging on a door, especially when it's hanging on a door, it makes a huge difference to have a clean edge either by painting it with a paint brush and going around and painting it either matching the colors to the actual door hanger or painting it black. It makes a huge difference, but this makes it super easy. It's one of my favorite tips to be able to, uh, like to bring your, your paintings like to the next twins. level. Mommy, they look like twins. When you are uh, selling door hangers, do you uh, paint the backs? I don't normally. Now look, if the back, look, my backs don't typically look too gnarly, right? They look pretty clean. Um, but there have been times where I have painted and it looks like an absolute crime scene on the back. If it looks like a crime scene, go ahead and paint it. Just paint it. There's no point in getting the sander out and, and possibly messing up the front because of all of the jostling around with the sander. Go ahead and uh, paint the back. It's totally up to you whether you want to paint it or not. Um, it's your preference. I recommend if you're going to write a message on the back, I recommend painting it black and write the message in a, uh, like a chalk marker and sealing it with that. It's just a nice clean look. Other than that, um, if you're going to be adding a sticker or um, a vinyl cutout or a stamp of your logo or anything, I would try to leave it as clean as possible on the back or paint it completely white. All right, so there we go. That is painted. The only thing we got to do is add the wire. Now, you can seal it before you add wire, or you can seal it after the wire. The wire is not going to get in the way, okay? 
So we're going to go ahead, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and add the wire. So I like to use fencing wire. This is a 17 gauge, 17 to 20 gauge wire for door hangers because door hangers can be kind of heavy, right? Compared to an ornament. I use 18 gauge wire for my ornaments and I use the jewelry grade. I go to the jewelry um, aisle at the craft store and buy jewelry grade wire. I go to um, Harbor Freight. I go to Tractor Supply. You can get this at um, anywhere where they sell fencing materials, Lowe's, Home Depot. This is the 17 gauge fencing wire, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. It's about 12 inches, maybe, maybe 14. Okay, so I just eyeball it. I want it to clear my leaf with about an inch or two above it. Good thing is if you make it an inch or two longer than it needs to be, it's a super easy fix, okay? Because all you have to do is when you go to hang it and you say, oh, my wire is too long. Well, that's cool. You just snip a little bit of the wire off and then recurl it, okay? So let me show you how I curl it. This is called a three-in-one, okay? You get this at the jewelry uh, section of Hobby Lobby or Michaels. This is a three-in-one. It's, uh, it's got wire cutters. It's got needle nose that are not flat. They're completely cylinder round, and they have all three, uh, they have all different size gauge going from the very tip top being teeny tiny for ornaments all the way to a bigger gauge down here for my door hangers, right? So I've got a good versatile uh, sizing of my, my pliers, okay? These are needle nose pliers, but they are not flat tip needle nose. Flat tips are flat on the inside. These are completely round spheres, okay? Or um, cones. And then you also have the flat nippers in here that can flatten things out for you to, uh, to straighten things out. So you've got wire cutters, a flattener, and then you also have got the needle nose right there. So I'm gonna take one end, I'm gonna put it on the widest uh, cylinder section, and I'm gonna curl it one. I'm gonna do a good maybe two curls. There we go. I just want a good little spiral. It takes, it takes some practice to get a good spiral, but you'll get it. All right, we feed it through the front. Ready, baby. Baby, quit. Y'all, if there's any sad faces or mad faces in the reactions of this video, it's because Ray Lynn's been sitting here pressing them. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and somehow remove those if I can. Mommy, stop being a baby. I'm not being a baby. You were putting mad faces on my video and that, that makes it look bad. <laughs> that hurts my feelings, actually. Okay, so now I've flattened it against the wood. Okay, so we've got it flattened against the wood. I'm gonna take this free edge that's not curled yet and I'm going to feed it through the back to the front, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it on the very tip of that wire on the very edge. I'm gonna curl it once, okay? And then I'm gonna curl it again. And then since I'm at a funky angle, it didn't, it didn't stay flat like my other one, so I'm gonna take that flat part of my three in one, and then I'm going to flatten it out against the wood so that my spiral is, is holding on to the wood. There we go. And actually that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good length. So about 12 to 14 inches was about the right length for our wire for this particular one. And there's our door hanger. So that is complete start to finish bare wood to wire hanger. It's ready other than being sealed. It's ready to go on the door. And I'll post a finished picture of it hanging on the door in just a little bit um, in my stories so that you can see uh, what it looks like on the door. So like I said, for a sealer, I do like a spray sealer. My favorite one is Krylon Triple Thick. I get it at Walmart, super cheap. For a brush on, my friend Miss um, Miss Bonnie over at Whimsical Art Painting Parties, she has uh, shown me this one and I absolutely love it. Let's see if I can find it. I have it in all different gloss. I have it in matte, high gloss, regular gloss. I use high gloss most of the time for brush on sealers. I like this Liquitex uh, high gloss varnish, okay? Here, let me get you a little, a little closer. Maybe you can get a, a screenshot of that. But I do like this uh, Liquitex high gloss varnish. Um, 
Oh, Terry, I'm so glad you got to hang out with us today, too. I felt like it was a really good tutorial. I do like the spray-on Krylon Triple Thick. I don't have a bottle of that sitting here, but you can get it at Walmart in the paint, in the spray paint section. All right, so if you end up painting one of these, I would love to see it. I would love to see um, your finished product. If you enjoyed what we did today, I would love to, to invite you to come join the studio with us. Put the word studio in the comments and I will come back and link to where you can get um, more information and how to register for the paint studio. It's $15 a month. We do things like this every month we take a new paint technique and we uh apply it to a three-piece home decor set just like we're going to be doing this week we've already done our door hanger and tomorrow we're going to do our porch liner attachment and then later on this week we're going to do our garland and then i have some i have some super super fun extra tutorials that i'm going to throw in there too just for fun so that we have a good five days of hanging out and talking about the studio and talking about our paint techniques tomorrow we're really going to dive into some messy painting again and we're going to dive into our um our shading techniques we're going to really dive into using floating medium again so if that one kind of um if that one kind of intimidated you tomorrow is a good day to get a good tutorial on that because it's going to all that uh the pie crust of our pie apple pie attachment it's going to be a lot of using floating medium to get the different um textures and the different dimension of, of the lattice look of the of the pie crust um so if you have any questions put them down in the comments i'll come back later and i will answer all the questions if you put the word studio i'll also be able to i'll also be linking how you can get more information and how to register for the paint studio for 15 dollars a month um cancel at any time there's no contract until tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. I will see you later. This is how you make an apple. This is how you make an apple. See you later.